Hey, welcome to Call the Audible. I am uh, remote today because I'm under the weather. Hello, remote. Yes, hello, remote. Uh, I, I have my science not flared up, so I don't want to risk it and get, uh, you know, the starting quarterback of the show, Iggy, sick before the playoffs. I don't want that to happen to you, Iggy. Thank you. Thank you. Even to Eagle, too, right? I don't want Eagle to get sick before his playoffs. So, I mean, anyway. you're going to be at the field of scorekeeping anyways, right? Outdoors tomorrow, masked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, at least outdoors. That's fine. Yeah, it is outdoors. Although probably that's going to make it worse because it's probably allergies. <laughs> I think it is allergies, man, <laughs> because I've been fine all day. Like, I've been doing my normal stuff, and it's been, like, bad. I got rocked by it, like, during, like, 1 o'clock, and I took, like, an hour nap. I felt better, but anyway. Okay, so anyway, it's uh, our last regular season episode of, of CTA before we go to the playoffs and, and next week, and we'll – I don't know what round we'll be in by next week, but we'll be in some round that we'll preview, recap, whatever it is. But we are joined um, to talk about the women's division, a player who has made, uh, who's made, uh, let's put it this way, waves, has made people's careers with her gameplay. A player that's been phenomenal for this league, for the co-ed and for women's. Lohi, will that, Lohi, how you been? I'm doing amazing. Thank you. How are you? I wish I was better. But better? <laughs> that's I'm fine. Not. Uh, first question for you, Laurie. Who's the biggest diva in FPF? Mm, that's a really good question. I'd have to go with uh, Mr. Iggy over here. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's drinking his Gatorade, right? Yeah, you're gonna uh, throw me under the bus like that. Okay, of no course. touchdowns, no <laughs> touchdown passes for you. <laughs> you need me, <laughs> like but you see, Laurie, that, that's what we're talking about. That, that, that's Iggy for you, right? A it diva. is. <laughs> uh, dictator of a quarterback who, who thinks he can rule the iron fist on on everyone that plays for him, uh, whether it's yes. co-ed or not. No, he's amazing. Uh, second best. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lally, <laughs> talk to us about the women's league here. Um, I know it's a smaller division this year of four teams, but how yes. has it been from your viewpoint of the caliber of, of talent that we've seen so far through eight weeks of the season? I would say there's a big difference between this season and if I would compare it to last season when I played. There's a lot less teams involved. There were only four. So I would say the comp the competition is not as huge as the last season. So that would be the main thing I would say about this season right now for but, the Women's League. But would you say it's better, though, because it enables the next players to kind of develop their skills <laughs> and get better in this group, and then when they play better competition, that they'll be ready to play at that level? Yes, of course. There's some pros and cons, we could say. Uh, some players could get better because they, they practice more, and they're playing oh. with the, the same like caliber of teams, I would say. Right. And, yeah, that's pretty much – that's the pro about it. Right, and you- Lodi, yeah, 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 I'll throw in a question as well. Um, so in playing uh, in, uh, in both uh, the women's division and, and in co-ed, um, specifically with the women's, we'll stick to it for now. But who do you think the best team in the co? co- uh, sorry, in the women's division is other than strangers? Uh, I would vary between two teams. It's either Ren Nation or Les Miet. They're both amazing teams. Their offense and defense players are amazing. So I would have to go with one or uh, one of these two. Okay, and your favorite player to watch in the women's division. I forgot her name, but she's in Red Nation. She's one of the receivers that I played against uh, for my last game. She is an amazing athlete. Yeah, she... Gerard, it's probably, is it Geraldine <laughs> Cabello Abante? I'm pretty sure she is. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yes, it is her. Yes, yes she is an amazing athlete. I saw her play. Just the way she runs her routes and how she gets open. It's just, it's amazing to see now, see, Lori, that's that's like trash talking words. It's that not. You, it is because you don't know the player's name, right? You're like, yeah, whatever that player <laughs> is. From, I can't, I'm bad with names, okay? <laughs> you know, she, she just learned Iggy's name like two minutes ago when I asked who the demon was. She's like, I, Ig, Iggy, yeah, Iggy's the guy. <laughs> Iggy's the guy. Um, when, when you look at uh, when you look at this division now, and, and you mentioned who you like in this division, yes, um, could you see maybe? strangers or villa pulling off the upset against these top two teams of red nation and lpm in the playoffs uh if i would talk about strangers uh they would have to just maybe the quarterback put the spread the ball more to her receivers that would be the main thing that would be the 
the best chance they would have to win against my nation because I think they were close with one of their, their games. But that's pretty much the main thing I would say about it. Yeah, why why are you saying it like you're not on the team? Are are you aren't you on the strangers? No, team? I, I am on strangers <laughs> team. That's why I'm saying from my point of view, because right. I, I didn't receive the ball as often on that team, unfortunately. But and I've saw I've seen the articles, like I'm not the only one who would say that to spread the ball more, but that would be their best shot at having more touchdowns and yards gained. So I'm going to be the asshole in the room and just say the last two weeks, you've lost to Red Nation by 25 points and 26 points, respectively. Yes. What happens? Is this because this isn't only like snubbed on offense, like the defense is also allowing like five, six scores a game and everything like that's not just the quarterback not giving you the ball. That's like a defensive failure, too. Like what's going on? Uh, I would say cause I wasn't there for the f- second Red Nation game. I w- I w- I'm going to talk for the last game that I played. So the last game we played against them, uh, a lot of interceptions were the reason from my quarterback. She threw the ball and on the Red Nation's defensive side, they would catch the ball and just run towards the touchdown. So that's the main thing about that game. So I'm pretty sure that was the main reason also for the game before that also. Yeah, I think there were two maybe even three pick sixes eagle so it wasn't yeah. all the the uh the red nation offense doing the scoring their red nation defense was putting up points as well exactly so what Lori's doing she's throwing her quarterback under the under the bus that's what i hear i'm she, she's gaining a reputation here of throwing she quarterbacks is, she's under becoming the bus. like a diva receiver you know like like a terrell owens like you know that type of status <laughs> is giving the damn ball and you know, you made the point before. No. Um, oh, look at that. Now, now she's going to pull back. No, no, no. no I <laughs> okay, okay, before. okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you look at when you look at your quarterback play, I'm a big fan of your quarterback on Strangers with yes. uh, Jamie Q. Tebow. What does she do? What does she do really well um, as a quarterback that really has impressed you with your time working with her? Uh, well, I've known her for a long time. I would say she her short passes. That's her best shot and I keep telling her that and it always works most of the time it works so that's like the main thing that she it's she's amazing at the the short passes uh, but she's also really good at defense I think she's got a lot of interceptions as, as a defensive player also if I'm not mistaken yeah I believe she might be uh, yep. second. Yes. yeah sec- exactly might, yeah it might be good for a second uh, total INTs in, in the entire women's division exactly um, Lori, I, I want to take the uh, the conversation outside of FPF for just a second. Still related to flag, but uh, I th- I think I heard through the grapevine that uh, that unfortunately you didn't make Concordia's flag team in your first tryouts, and I'm wondering how that's helped you improve maybe certain aspects of your game, or if it's motivated you in any way. Yes, so basically, uh, I no, unfortunately, I did not make the team. Uh, so it, it made me really sad at the beginning. But from how I saw it, it made me want to work even harder and better to be well, to become better because I really want to make the team. So it's just motivating me a lot to work harder. And we'll see Laurie, what happens next year. Lori, is there someone behind you? Yeah, but yeah, whatever, it's, it's fine. It's Joey. <laughs> who, who, who is that behind you? It's Joey. <laughs> Joey Nataro is in the, in the background. Oh, look at that, eh? <laughs> He's quicker I, leaving the background picture than running the rest over there. Do anyway. you want him to come? <laughs> I heard he, he wanted to, to join. join. Yeah, he he did. Uh, I, I saw an album. I'm like, what the hell is that moving behind her? Anyway. <laughs> So you, you mentioned you mentioned not, not making uh, the, the Concordia roster last year. Yes. Um, let's just say for, for giggles. Of course. If you were to play them, would there be an added motivation to you to kind of prove a point, hey, you guys bypass me, but I'm killing your team on the, on the football field? Of course. Like, I feel like it's just, well, not to, like, not no, to no, brag like, or anything. Go on, go on. It's, of course, like, from I get rejected, like, of course I want to work harder so they could see, like, maybe what they passed on. Because, yeah, it's, it's, that's how I see it. So, yes, I would say yes. Yeah, and I think look, that's I think it's paid off uh, more, and maybe you would agree. But uh, Lori will let if I look at the co-ed uh, uh, statistics, uh, she's actually the number one female in uh, with nine touchdown catches. Uh, that's the fifth best in all of uh, co-ed too. 
So, uh, Lurdy, I think you've done uh, a good job at uh, maybe improving certain offensive aspects of your game. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, you know, I score kept a few of her games, so the numbers haven't ha- – you see the correlation. When, when I score keeper games, it's improved. I'm just letting you guys <laughs> So, it's th- thanks to you, Mo. <laughs> Perhaps it is, yes. Uh, Lonnie, lo- looking forward now towards the women's playoffs. Um, yes. That's coming up in a couple weeks here. Um, could, could this be a springboard for these teams here to kind of say, hey, we did what we did in, in this division here, but maybe we can test ourselves in a higher tier – uh, come maybe fall, if not winter season, when there should be more teams coming back in 2023? What do you mean by that? Like, if, for example, if Red Nation, right? If they were yeah. to win it all, yes, uh, they didn't win it last year. They lost in the finals. But yeah. could they give themselves that belief that, hey, we can compete with the best teams if we move up to the next tier of the women's division uh, next season? I'm sure they could, yes. They have great receivers. They just need maybe, like, I don't know what happened – like maybe the chemistry or something, but no. If they put the, if they have the right mindset and the receivers do what they're supposed to be doing, I'm sure they could, for sure, succeed. Uh, last that. question for you from my end. Um, I really like your headset. I know it's a HyperX something. Uh, could you tell us which model it is, and that way Mo <laughs> can go buy it himself because his little uh, earbuds are getting a little. Well, bit you old. know what? It's not even mine. It's Joey's, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> oh, shared items. Okay. Yeah, let's get Joey Natara on, on this episode here while we're at it, right? <laughs> All right, Laurie, thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's been a pleasure Thanks. having you on with us. I hope you weren't too nervous. I know you were telling Iggy and I that you were a little bit uh, nervous, but uh, you did a wonderful job with us. Thank and thanks you. so much for, for Perfect. Well, uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, it you, you, you raised the profile of the women's division for sure with your skill play, and, and uh, we're confident you will make the Concordia team uh, this fall. Hopefully and, we and, do. Hopefully I do. Yes. And then, uh, and then perhaps win a championship as well for for the university level as well. So best Would luck to that. To yes. Best luck for the remainder of your seasons that you have left. And if yes. it gets out of line being a diva, you let me know. And you let you know. We'll take care of that <laughs> I'll let you know more for sure. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Lori. Perfect. Thank, Thank you so much for having me. You good. Take care. You too. Bye bye. Bye. All right, and now we can start the show. All right. Okay. Welcome back to Call. No, it's an awesome job by her. Uh, I love their answers. Right? She didn't. She didn't shy away. Yeah. Like she, she, yeah. She, she told she it said, how it is. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't shy away about certain things, and that's good. You, you want personalities like that, and and she <laughs> she, she definitely has a chance to uh, to carve herself a, a solid FPF career uh, for years to come for however long she wants to play in this league. Right. So that's really great to see that happen as well. Uh, since we're doing the women's coverage right now, quickly here. Um, we're now into the final run of games. We're now into the playoff world and stuff like that. Uh, we have our two best teams at six and two with, with LPM and and, and uh, Red Nation. Um, tail of the tape right now, Iggy. Are we looking at these two teams in the final of the women's uh, division on August fourteenth? Yeah, that that have to be my best bet. Uh, you know, if I'm putting a hundred bucks down on it, yeah, give me uh, Le Psymiet. Give me Red Nation in the uh, in the final. Red Nation uh, will be looking, of course, this time uh, to win uh, instead of uh, taking the loss to uh, oh man, the Bourget, the uh, the Bourget Volts uh, from yeah. the winter season. Uh, there, so Red Nation uh, will be looking to get back there into the finals this time, uh, looking to get a championship under their belt under their belts. Yeah, look, I, I know we we poked at the Red Nation offense and the fact that you know they don't they don't have the panache, I would say, right, in terms of the consistency that required to to win at this level. But now, here it is, right? It, it's a, I know it's a one game at a time a theory here, but this is a two game spring springboard for them. That if they're gonna put it together now, this is the best two games that Allison Sobel has to have. This is the best two games that Gigi Kabila Bonte has to have. Uh, this is the best two games that the supporting cast have to have. Uh, to win themselves a championship because again, you talk about Red Nation for where they were uh, last winter, which was a couple months ago. They they didn't play well in the finals. They were they were outclassed from top to start to finish, and now here they are for a chance to kind of reestablish themselves in the hierarchy of the women's division. That going into maybe fall if not for the winter season of next year, that yeah, they're going to be a tough team to beat uh, in 2023. Yeah, I I, I think uh, you're you're right there with the depth. That uh, that the Red Nation offense is gonna have to rely on. Um, Strangers and Leptimiet will uh, put their best defender on Gigi Cabello Abante. Uh, 
that means that Tatiana, the likes or the names of uh, Tatiana Bacos, Rachel Valliard, of course, we know her defensive prowess. She's going to have to step up her game, her game on offense. Uh, players like Nikki Limniades. When players like these uh, actually, like when they get the ball in their hands, they are dangerous uh, making a move and uh, dangerous with their speed to gain a first down, get a touchdown. Um, the issue with them is just uh, with. Uh, clean cuts on their routes, one, and then two, uh, making the catch. So if those two things are improved on and, and uh, are, are done well uh, in their playoff run, uh, yes, I agree. Watch out for Red Nation to uh, to come out on top of the women's. Yeah, well, look, we'll find out. Um, Eagle, do you know when the dates are for the women's semifinals? Is that going to be uh, before or after we do the next episode uh, the following week coming up? I'm checking the schedule right now. Absolutely. So uh, yeah. August 8th is going to be the semifinals, which, if my memory serves me correctly, is a sun uh, is a Monday, actually, uh, not next week, but the week after. So we will have an episode in between to go through the matchups and figure out exactly what's going on there. And okay. then, of course, the championship finals is noon on Sunday, the August 14th. Right. So so we'll, we'll have a chance to preview it. And it, it might give these teams like Villa – and strangers like an extra added week of kind of just refocusing and getting themselves locked in because on a short turnover, if they were to play next week, I'd say, yeah, the top two teams would roll, but maybe there's a slight chance that they can change the demographics of them getting to the finals and maybe crash without apology, right? In the finals uh, on August 14th. So we'll see how that plays out. All right. Uh, on to the headlines of this week here. Uh, we do have a lot to get to a lot of house cleaning for those out there. Uh, first and foremost, look, Last games are Thursday coming up. By the time you watch this podcast, you might have been okay, whatever. It is awfully important that all the teams who are still playing their final game or games show up. We've had issues the last couple of nights, especially on on Tuesday in Loyola, where teams did not show up. At one point, I think we had three games played through two hours of, of, of gameplay of, of the Tuesday night matchups. Guys, you know what the uh, collateral damage is. If you don't show up without a reason, regardless, if you don't show up, you're being fined. You're being fined a hundred dollars, and that to goes the towards other, the team, to the other to team, the other, to and the then fifty dollars to FPF. It's one hundred and fifty exactly. total. Exactly. So, so look, show up. Like, it, who cares? Show up with with scrubs if you have to, because guys, again, they give up. You know, they finish the nine to five, and they come race out to Loyola or Lachine or whatever the plan, Papineau or Laval, and you no show. It's a, it's it sucks for the team. So please. Show up, even notify the league so maybe we could help you find guys to come play for your team uh, for the last games that you have left on your schedule. So please, please, please show up to your final games. Even if you're not going to the playoffs, to show up, play the game for one hour, and let bygones be bygones. And especially if you're going to the playoffs, please show up. So to give you context on this, we have a rule that says if you uh, do not show up to your Week 10 game, or like your last game essentially, uh, you are ineligible for a playoff seed. So however the seeding fi finalizes itself, wherever you are, you actually forfeit your spot uh, if you don't come to Game 10. And people asking, well, that's a stupid rule. What's going on about it? It's because because the weeks span from like, you know, uh, Sunday to Thursday. In theory, the Thursday teams have an advantage in knowing exactly what they need to do in order to get them seated in a very particular spot. So as a very simple example, you tank your points against to get a favorable matchup because you know exactly where you're going to fall with the tie breaks and everything, right, and the, and the seating. So you actually kind of not only control your destiny from a winning or losing perspective, but you can actually control other factors going into it. So in order to not give you an advantage, we basically say, well, you have to show up for your last game, essentially. Play it out. If you want to throw your game, okay, but show up. Show up and make a fool of yourself, essentially, right? You can't not show up. You have to go there and embarrass yourself. So... Yeah, by all means, it's, it's just important. It looks, it looks bad on teams and stuff. I, I, look, I get it. You don't want to play with guys. People pay to play. You know, we're, we're not a pro league here. You're not being paid to play. Just show up, play your game. If you have to find four scrubs, then go for it. Not the end of the world. We 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 always add guys to the roster. It takes two minutes to do that, yep. and just play your game. That's all it is, right? So and hopefully we won't have that on Thursday in Laval. If we do, then you guys are are rich people to give off 150 bucks. Uh, 100 to the, to the team and 50 bucks to us for for our for our coffers. So it is what it is. Uh, anything else to bring up here, Eagle, for uh, for playoffs before we head into the topics here? Uh, five games played. Make sure that's done. 
Uh, yeah. If you did have any players that missed the game due to double headers, definitely let us know before playoffs start, not right. like an hour before the game or show up with a guy. Theoretically, if the number next to his name doesn't say five, you have a problem. That guy should not allow, be allowed to play or girl. Um, so keep that in mind. The website doesn't have five next to their name. They're technically ineligible for playoffs. It will say five if they are eligible. So just make sure right. that's correct. If they have duplicate profiles um, for whatever reason, because you know a scorekeeper doubled it, uh, got created accidentally with a different name, etc., and they add up to, let's say, five games, but one has three, one has two, Technically, that player is ineligible. They have to have a single uh, item for it. We understand that there's probably a mistake on our end. Fine. But have that corrected. Email the league so we can fix it uh, and just make sure everything is good. So, yeah, just make sure they you have enough games played. A team that plays with an ineligible player forfeits that playoffs game. So, don't do that. Yeah. And okay. then one, and then I got one more for you. Yeah, go it's, a, uh, it's a context one, uh, Eagle. I'll set you up. So, what if I'm a team, Eagle? I have eight players that are eligible for playoffs. So, I'm good. But my quarterback got injured. Can I IR my quarterback and bring in another quarterback? So the IR rule was changed in 2022 such that there's only two scenarios where you're allowed to use the injury reserve system. Scenario number one is the one you just described. Your quarterback goes down. You can replace your quarterback with another player. However, there's rules in terms of what their max rating can be in order to come in depending on what division you're in. You have to be cap compliant for your entire team, obviously. And here's the kicker. The player that is injured is not allowed to come back for the entire playoff run. So they're basically out-out. It's not like he's on vacation for a week, uh, he rolled his ankle type of stuff and can't play this week, but he's good next week. No, he's out entirely. So you have to make that decision early on in terms of what's going on. The other option you have is if your team will not have enough players eligible for playoffs due to injury. So let's say you had six guys that were eligible, but in week 10 or even week nine for that matter, a guy goes down and now you only have five players that are eligible for playoffs because of an injury. Well, you can prove that they have an injury that is preventing them from playing. And then you're allowed to bring in a sixth person to at least make the game go on that were considered fair. It may not be super competitive, obviously, because... You know, you're still six guys on the field and everything and not your usual roster or whatever. But at least you're going to have a game. And again, there's rules in terms of you have to be cap compliant. There's a certain max roster and the whole stuff. Um, but those are the two scenarios. Quarterback can be IR'd or if you're not a uh, playoff eligible players, uh, you can IR someone in. OK, fair enough then. So please, please understand the language. If you don't email the league because playoffs are literally Sunday. By the time you watch this podcast on Thursday and beyond, you have literally two, if not three days before playoffs begin. And we don't want teams to be in a bind where they didn't know. And, and so please email the league and ask them, hey, can I do this or do that? Am I allowed or am I not allowed? So that's important for that as well. Okay, so let's get into it. Division E. Um, I know people have been asking, what is the playoff format? Well, we finally have the playoff format, uh, yes, we ladies and gentlemen. It took us eight and a half weeks to figure it out. But we finally got the playoff format. And I look forward to it with Iggy and with Eagle to unveil it. So how do you want to do it here, Eagle? Do you want to unveil the playoff format or do you want us to talk about it first? Uh, we'll talk about it first. Let, let's start off by saying we knew what the format was going to be all along. We just didn't want to announce it. Ha, 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 ha. Um, well, technically speaking, yeah, mid-June is when we, when we had it figured out, really. Oh, we had this figured out even earlier than that, Mo. I think you set up the system back in, was it April, May? Uh, early May, and then uh, on the car ride to Mal Bay for Simal's wedding, I laid it out to Robert about half an hour out from Mal Bay after we spoke to him on the phone. I said, Rob, what do you think? He goes, I like it. I'm like, all right, cool, man. We'll move forward with the idea. And so, here it is. So here here's is. how the format is going to work, and we're going to get it on the screen as well so everyone at home can follow along. It is a reseeded <laughs> bracket, so proper way of actually doing the structures of it. However... There is a swap. Actually, I should probably move you guys. There is a swap yeah. of uh, play of, of teams depending on the conference that you're in. So the top bracket will be one, two, three, and four seeds from conference A versus the five, six, seven, and eight seeds from conference B. 
And then the bottom part of the bracket, we have the one, two, three, four seeds from Conference B versus the five, six, seven, and eight seeds from Conference A. So essentially, we're swapping the uh, conferences. This is going to allow for one different matchup. So hopefully, no rematches immediately. And two, for anyone complaining that Conference A is easier than Conference B, oh, it's more competitive, etc. Well, here's your chance to prove it, right? Go ahead, be the eight seed in B and beat the one seed in A, right? Go ahead and show that up. The only thing we're, you're going to have to do is fight your way through the entire bracket from that position. So if you think you're better than the one team, you better also you also better be better than the two team, the three team, and the four team to make your way all the way to the finals. So no split between like an E or a, a ED or DE or whatever we were calling it essentially. E1, E2. It's one single champion that's going to come from Division E. Uh, based on this seeding. Yeah, so to, to give an example, if you were asking, well, what does 1A mean in terms of them playing AB? So, for example, if the playoffs were to start today, 1A would be Le Petit Carotte, and they would play 8B, which would be um, Sizzle. At this example, point, it would be right? Sizzle. Exactly. Now, so, there is another idea. point of this, which is important for you to mention. Actually, I didn't bold you, so I should probably bold you. Um, yeah. Because of the misalignment is what I'm going to describe it as between conference a and conference B in the number of teams that were in there. Uh, and there's a, there's a logistical reason as to why that happened. Usually we try and keep it even. I mean, everyone's like, why can't you do nine and nine? Yes. Thank you. We knew that we had it as nine and 10 actually. Cause there were 19 teams. We, one team dropped out. So we got screwed. So this is what we have. Uh, we've instituted what is similar to the way the CFL operates for playoff seeds in the crossover uh, seed system where if you are in Conference B and you are the ninth seed, currently Cavalier de Rohan, if your record is better than the eighth seed in Conference A, in this case TB Elite, you steal the eighth seed in Conference A. So currently, Cavalier de Rohan are in the playoffs, TB Elite is out as of now. Right. Now, obviously, there's still a lot of movement to happen, but there is a crossover rule in place specifically for the last seed of Conference A where the ninth seed in B can steal it. Uh, based on this. So as of right now, the top six teams in Conference A are clinched. The top eight teams in Conference B are clinched. And Brewers, TB Elite, Cavalier de Rohan, and Mountain Goats are all technically in the running for the final two seeds. Okay. Uh, TB Elite have two games left. Cavalier de Rohan and Mountain Goats have one. And Brewers are done and waiting, essentially. So depending on the outcome of those games, um, it's possible Cavalier steal it. It's possible Mountain Goats can pass Cavalier and potentially steal it or TB Elite just wins out and bumps up and then uh, Cavalier would steal it from Brewers instead. So there's a lot of movement going on at this point uh, in terms of what happens next. So a lot of unknown variables as well. So so again, it's a different format. It gives more storylines. It gives teams a chance to play the other division as well to kind of extend their, their FPS stay however long it might be. And a reminder, right? After the first round, it's reseeded from top to bottom. So you're still rewarding teams who finish in the higher end of their division a chance to play the weaker side of the, whoever they're going to have in the next round. So you don't know who you're going to play. And that's the beauty of this whole process. This idea is that you're not going to be guaranteed to play this team or that team. And again, the best on best will play out. And we should have the best two teams at the end of the day, regardless of seed, play each other in the finals on August 14th. And Eggy, your thoughts on this, because you play in this division, does this bring a little bit more intrigue for you and for the players who are going to say, okay, let's see how this plays out moving forward. Yeah, I, I like it in that uh, uh, there's things I like and don't like about it necessarily. Maybe it's not that things I don't like, but maybe things I like about the traditional way of doing it, doing a one versus eight within uh, Conference A and then doing a one through eight versus uh, in, in Conference B. Uh, so what I like about this new format is the fact that you're playing in your first game in a playoff game that's more important than ever. Uh, you're playing against an unknown commodity. Uh, usually, you know, chances are that you haven't played against that team. And that brings some, like you said, intrigue, uh, it brings some question marks some just unknowns to the table that you can either use to your advantage um, yeah. or to your disadvantage that you don't necessarily know what the team's strengths are. Now, what I like with the traditional format is that chances are you are playing against a team that you have faced in the regular season. And that starts now entering the question marks of, uh, of who's the better team at adapting. So we lost to you in the first game by two points. It was a close game. Who's now the better? The, it's like a chess match. Who's the better, uh, better opponent in round two? 
or sorry, in, in like the second matchup, which is now a round one playoff matchup. Um, but sticking to the format that we're that we're gonna go with, yeah, I I, I like the idea of you know conference B seemed to be very uh, very it was close, but the better the better of the two conferences. I like that now Praetorian Guard, Magnetos, Vic in a Box, and Black Label. Look, all those teams have seven or more wins. Uh, they now have to play up uh, against again. We don't know the final two seeds, but Sulefs and Pillow Talkers. You know, uh, Pillow Talkers with a couple of their forfeits uh, are now three and six. Um, maybe it's a it's a matchup that favors them to play Praetorian Guard instead of playing Le Petit Carat, uh, just f- for an example. So a, a, a lot more intrigue. I think Joel Mendelssohn is going to have a fun time writing about uh, about this playoff. Uh, matchups with uh, cross-conferences, uh, playoff matchups. Yeah, and to, to kind of counter your point, Iggs, about the whole like division rivalry and stuff about, hey, teams, you know, having the rematch, it could still happen. It's you know, still you, good, you, yes. It could still happen, right? Like, so you mentioned before in CB how there's four teams at 7-2 or better, and, oh, well, it, it, you lose out. Well, yes, you could, but if they win out, at some point, these four teams will play each other. Yes, and if they're if they're the so called best four in this division as a whole, then they'll prove their worth, right? And they'll get to the final four, and then the final two, and then finally crowning the champion for Division E. So, I mean, look, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, it, it could create upsets. It could create uh, the unknown that oh my god, the eighth seed uh, beat the one seed, which would be great yep. because they didn't play each other. But that's the idea that right? you're, you're giving you're giving a chance to that unknown that this team could pull off the upset at some point during the playoffs whether you're an eight, seven, or 16 moving forward. Yeah, and then just to wrap it up, it, just in general, just for us to shake things up, tweak it just slightly, right? Because it's not so so different. But we're tweaking it just enough to uh, add some spice. I like that. Yeah, no, and that's it. That's the idea. And, and <coughs> Excuse me. And, and you know, for the lower divisions, and it's tough because they're new teams, generally speaking. So we don't know. Uh, from a blind, you know, draw of, okay, we have these teams in this division and that team in, in those divisions. We don't know. And then when it comes down to it in years past, we're like, oh, crap, you know what? In hindsight, the, the, the best teams are on this side of the bracket. Well, now it's out the window. We're going to find out who the best team is moving forward. And speaking of the best team here, uh, Iggy, we talk about Magnetos. Could they go 10-0 and 0 to be the 1A going to, or the 1B going towards the playoffs uh, next week? Yeah, I think so. Looking at their their schedule, uh, they have the uh, I believe one in nine or one in eight Mountain Goats, and they have the one in eight uh, TB Elite. So uh, Magnetos have proven uh, over the season that they are better than these two teams. Clearly, uh, so yes, a ten and zero record, the number one seed in Conference B uh, will go uh, to Magnetos. Uh, now, unless. <laughs> Here's the um, I'll throw a wrench in uh, in into yeah. it all. Uh, that quarterback play. Did they find the best quarterback amongst the five that have suited up? Uh, there's that question. There's will Adam Malinoff maybe potentially be able to come back? And are, so are they going to use him? Are they going to IR him? Uh, IR with the IR rule that Eagle explained about five to six minutes ago. Uh, so that that will be a, a an interesting question. I still think they'll go ten and zero, but it'll be an interesting question who the quarterback is going into the playoffs. Yeah, and that's something we we spoke about before uh, of their quarterback play and, and what they have to do, but. It's sort of like baseball, right? You know, baseball, you can hit the home run ball during the regular season, but come playoffs, you need starting pitching to win you the World Series. Well, look, you can you can have five quarterbacks out there and be successful, but you need that one guy that's going to win you a championship, right? And who is it on the Magneto's roster that could be that quarterback? And, and I think that's a question that they have, they have to address. You got two more games left. They can figure it out by them, but by the time we hit the knockout stages come next week, eggs, they have to know who that guy is, and they can't flip-flop here because at this point, when you get deeper and deeper into the playoffs, you're you're supposedly playing better competition. Yeah, And if they're playing the Praetorian Guard, if they're playing uh, Vic in the Box um, as examples, they need to know who that quarterback is if they want to be successful in the playoffs. Yeah, no, no time for messing around. They would need to have built – chemistry within you know two three weeks of playing with the same quarterback uh because like you like you mentioned 
higher uh, higher division. Well, it's not higher division, but uh, better and better competition as you go along into the playoffs means you're playing better and better defenses that have that are more adept, that have seen uh, a lot of play concepts that are just better in general, right? Right. So, so yes, uh, the quarterback play they're they're gonna have to stick to one guy moving forward, uh, but. The defense, the defensive side of Magneto's uh, can uh, catapult them uh, maybe to at least one playoff uh, victory, if not two, with the names like Louis Epstein, Jordy Melnick, uh, Matthew Lutner. The, those are the three uh, heavyweights on uh, both, you know what, two, both ways, in fact, both uh, offensively and defensively. So can they maybe uh, potentially uh, bring them to a semifinal or finals appearance? Right. Right. Uh, look, we look at Vic in the box. They have their quarterback issue right now with Nick Richard, right, who is banged up as we speak. Uh, could they hold off Black Label for the three seed in Conference B? And from the long term view for Vic in the box, do they have a quarterback problem if their biggest player at the pivot position isn't available? So. Look, they, uh, in terms, we'll start with the Vic and Box versus uh, Black Label. It, it's not a, the, the last game of the season, but it's just in terms of this, the standings. Uh, Vic and Box play uh, Big Fat Bats. That's actually not an easy uh, victory uh, for Vic and Box, whereas uh, Black Label, uh, they have on their final docket, they have Win Diesel. I think that right. is a more favorable matchup for Black Label. I disagree. Label. I disagree, Iggy. Win Diesel is a tough out. I think okay maybe I didn't maybe I saw them when um, without William Sabag at, at, at quarterback Is, yeah have you seen him at the helm under uh, for them yeah they're, they're physical you know and I must say in a negative way that they're dirty not yeah, not yeah, dirty yeah, yeah. physical but they're physical yeah. you know, they, they got they got dudes that have that play high-end football uh, that took them time to adapt to the flag football level but now I think that that is not a gimme win in this scenario and, and, and excuse me <clears throat> but at this point now for the season you're gonna have to kind of grind out victories right it, it, you know it's just a different animal at this point of the year so if they're gonna pull it off it, it may not be easy and I, this might be one of those one score type of games where it might come down to five place to win that football game on thursday Sure, I don't disagree with what you're saying. So yeah, I think it could be a one-score game, Black Label versus Win Diesel. I just think the Vic in a Box Big Fat Bats is a one to two point game, not possession game. Two one to two points. So that's that's my uh, point there, especially with Black Label. When you have, especially in Division E, when you have a prime quarterback uh, like uh, Fred Junot for Black Label, give me that. Nine nine point five times out of ten, uh, I'm taking the team with a better quarterback to to win a matchup. Uh, now the second part of your question is: Are we worried about Vic in a box without Nick Richard? Uh, I saw them play yesterday uh, without Nick Richard. Yeah, I believe it's West Tyem's uh, brother Jeff Taye. Sorry, Taye, not Tyem. Uh, he looked good, man. He he looked the part. He was hitting Craig Browning, utilizing Max Bura to their best of their abilities, getting Cody Bura involved in the offense, who uh, who's been under underutilized under Nick Richard. He he looked like in full control of that offense. So I'm not too worried uh, if Nick Richard is not available. They could IR rule him uh, and uh, and put in uh, Jeff uh, Taye at quarterback, and they wouldn't look too much different. Well. Yeah, I did speak to him about that. I don't know if you're referring to that when you mentioned the example of the quarterback IR rule. And I said, guys, like, just an FYI, but if you do IR Nick, he can't play the rest of the playoffs. That's correct. And yeah. so that kind of brought a little seed of doubt in their mind, saying, well, what do we do? What do we do? So I'll be intrigued to see what Vic in the Box does for that quarterback position, at yeah. Iggs, because they don't have to IR Nick. They can say, look, can we roll the dice and, and get past our first round one matchup, whoever that might be? Without him. Mm. Without him. So it's a gamble, but are you confident enough to say, can we go with someone else on that roster that's not a new addition at this point of the year to win us that round one? Because if they do that, then you buy yourself maybe a couple more days before Nick perhaps comes back. But let's not forget, right, uh, Iggs, that playoffs start July 31st, correct? Which is on a Sunday. Yep. So Division E, I believe, is four games, is it not? Should uh well I mean four games eight, and four, one four three yeah so eight four yeah five yeah 
It should be four games, right? Give or take. Can you weather the storm without Nick for four games? Let's say, let's say he's only available for the finals on August 14th. That's in two weeks after we start the finals. Can you weather the storm of saying, look, we can get through the quarterfinals. We can get through, um, which, is the, which is the round of 16. We can get through the round of eight. Then the final four. Can you get through that? Because it's going to be tough sliding this year than the years past, knowing that you have a tougher bracket of the unknown that's going to be presented to you. So let me let me quickly clarify this just so everyone's aware. Yeah. So the first round of Division E will be on Sunday, July 31st. I believe the, all the games are at Laval based on what Correct. I'm seeing on our site. Yes. Then <coughs> round two is Thursday, August 4th uh, yep. at Laval as well, outdoors. Yep. That's going to be the as I, that's divisional round. Quarterfinals. Or the quarterfinals. Yeah, the round of eight. Then, yeah. You have the semifinals on Tuesday, October, uh, October, August 9th uh, for the semifinals. And then, of course, you have the finals on the 14th itself. So you do have a little bit of time between your first game this Sunday and the next round. And then even then you have a little bit of time until the next round. And then you have even much more time until the finals and everything. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a hard call to make to see what you want to do at, the, at that pivot position. So, Eagle, as a captain of your team, you know, what will you do if you, if you were the victim of the box guys? Uh, this all depends on my confidence and who I have, who I'm not going to IR, right? If I want to stay with my, my regular roster, is there anyone there who actually can be QB2 who can get us a win? If the answer is yes, then I think we go with them, uh, assuming that we can get uh, what's Nick, his Richard. Name here? Nick, uh, Richard. Nick uh, Richard back, back <coughs> by the Thursday game. If you can't get him back yeah. for Thursday, that's 50% of the playoffs. You, the decision's easy. You go with Jeff for sure. Um, but if there's a, a high probability that you get Nick back for that Thursday game and he's going to be 100% or at least close to it, you definitely want him. And so I would roll the dice. Again, assuming you have someone who can fill that spot for that game. Yeah. If you don't have anyone, I mean, I don't think you have much of a choice then, right? Like, I'd, I'd rather play with Jeff uh, Tayeb throughout the entire uh, playoff series than not have a quarterback for the first game and not have a playoff series. Right. Okay. No, it's, 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 it's a tough question for Vic in the box. And they got a few more days before they have to decide. And and I'm sure they'll keep their, their cards close to the vest, but I'm sure they'll inform the league, uh, Eagle, as, as it's supposed to be, in due time that, hey, we're going to go with this route here moving forward. So a lot to look forward to, but we'll see how this plays out. Anything else, uh, Iggs, from the V that you want to bring up? Uh, no, no. Uh, I think that uh, pretty much brings us into the uh, into the Division E playoffs. We have a new uh, playoff format. Uh, yeah, I think we've covered a, a lot there. Fair enough. Uh, we hope to be joined by Brent Bakken as well for Div A and B, so we'll hopefully get Brent on right now to talk about those divisions. Hopefully he will answer his phone. I think he will. I hope he does. Should I check my, should I check my phone if he didn't respond back to me, Iggy, or no? I mean, yeah, you should check. If not, we can always do another division in the interim until he gets back yeah, to Yeah, well, exactly. That's it, though. And we hope to be joined by Alexis Dubois as well, who said he is in, but uh, never know with the Prime Minister if he is or not, so that's why. Prime Minister's busy, you know? He is indeed. In the meantime, let's uh, no answer here from Brent. I guess if you want, Eagle, you can try him on the phone, see if he picks up. If he does, we'll go. If not, we'll go Division C afterwards. Uh, let's just go uh, pick a division that's not Brent oriented, and I'll try and uh, reach out to him. Division C. Uh, he just asked me what time. <laughs> we'll I mean, go Division looks... C. We'll do Div yeah. C, and we'll, we'll we'll get Brent on in a few minutes here. So uh, I'll say in about fifteen minutes from now with Brent Box. Perfect. So, all right, uh, Division C. Uh, look, we talked about off air here, Iggy. Um, yeah. La Montagnara, tough lungs. That's the big game coming up here in this division. Um, essentially, lose your out when you are in prime pole position to get in the playoffs here. The tail of the tape, who gets the edge in this game? Well, just before we dive into the into the matchup, it's winning your in for both teams, but lose and you're eliminated for Le Montagnard but not necessarily for Tough Lungs. Tough Lungs still have another game on the docket uh, that they uh, they have another chance. If they lose to Le Montagnard, uh, Tough Lungs have another chance to uh, to make it in. Um, but yes, uh, otherwise, this, this matchup uh, is actually going to be very close. Both teams uh, with only three wins on the season. But the thing with Tough Lungs, uh, those three wins, they kind of play up and down to their competition. So 
I'm a little worried for them going into this one. Uh, one, for that reason. And then two, uh, because I'm actually not sure who the quarterback is for <laughs> for the tough lungs. Look, Matthew Lerner's been uh, throwing for the most part. But then on the kind of the back half of the season, there's been a mix of Justin Lerner and, uh, and Danny Alward. Uh, throwing for the team so I'm not sure if it's because Matthew Lerner's injured or if he was just on vacation for a couple weeks but the quarterback question mark just has me worried a little bit not because I don't trust Justin Lerner or Danny Allward they're probably <laughs> they might even be better quarterbacks than Matthew himself but then you take those one of those receivers out of uh, out of the set or at least you take Justin Lerner out of the receiver core if he plays quarterback so those two things kind of worry me for for tough lungs. Yeah, you know, it's it's a fair question bring up about tough like quarterback play. Like we know Matthew Lerner is their guy, right? And we'll find out because they'll play uh seven o'clock in Brosser. And my God, they have to go Brosser to about. My God, yes. what type of schedule is that? It's terrible. Anyway, um <coughs> look, Danny Elward is a good quarterback. Yeah. Very. Um he's got to play the final two games to be eligible for playoffs. So I would imagine he will be playing in those two games. But I just think from the perspective of where they want to be as a whole with Matthew Lerner, he's their guy. He's the guy that's been with this team forever, Iggs. And I can't see them deviating off of him at this point in the year because, yeah, they had some tough losses and they had some big wins in that three-game winning streak of theirs. But I think at this point in the year, you have to go with Matthew Lerner as their guy moving towards this final matchup of games and if they do qualify towards the playoffs next week. Yeah, and then from the other point of view, uh, Le Montagnan as well. It's I'm not sure who who the quarterback is. Is it is it going to be Julien Fissassier, uh who has for at least for the franchise as a whole has usually been the quarterback, or do they hand the reins off to Anthony Brisbois in his two games where he played? He put up uh, monster numbers: 265 yards, seven or eight touchdowns in in, in both uh, of, of his two games. Uh, so again, there's a lot of uh, question marks surrounding the uh, who's going to play at, at quarterback for both teams. I actually did preview this game uh, in my article last week, uh, and I have uh, Tough Lungs coming out with a one point victory, uh, 26 to 25. I think both teams will only uh, will only score four times um, and it'll be a bit of a defensive battle. I, I, uh, I like both defenses picking off whatever quarterback it is, honestly, uh, yeah. at least, at least twice and then getting a stop uh, on defense once, meaning like a, a four and out or, or uh, killing a drive. So uh, four scores, three possessions where they stop the defenses. I think it's a really tough game. Okay. So I, I told Breeze, well, I think, <laughs> Excuse me. I think he was originally a quarterback back in his tackle days. Okay. Like he was, he wasn't a natural receiver. He's just, <laughs> he's just a naturally gifted player. Okay. Absolutely so, sure. so I think in this roll of the dice for them, you have to go with Antoine Breezeball to be the quarterback. You you might weaken your receiver position because of what Breezeball brings as a pass catcher, which we've all witnessed before, but. If you're looking for that spark, if you're looking for that buccaneering style of football, then yeah, I go with Anto Breezebaugh to be your guy. Now, again, for a team like Tough Lungs that has some decent players to work with, um, you talk about their defense. Darren Medizian calls a really good defense. Uh, the Wrangler that he is, he can he can really hook and seal <clears throat> the Bulls out there. That I think that Tough Luck defense will be, score, be tough to score against. And if you can't get more than 25 against them, it favors Tough Lungs to win that football yes. game. Like if you go high scoring against Tough Lungs, I don't know if Matt Miller can go throw for throw with whoever he, that quarterback will be. But yes. if the Tough Lung defense plays well, then I think it changes the whole dynamic of that, of that football game, which becomes uh, a favor for Tough Lungs moving towards maybe a playoff spot and maybe a higher seed in the playoff standings. So, yeah, so I def totally agree with you there. Uh, the thing with the comment with Anthony Brisbois, uh, he probably, I, I don't know 100% for sure, but he probably cannot play as receiver. His rating would probably be too high, and he would that would bust, make them bust the cap. Uh, his quarterback rating is a 55 or a 60. Yeah. Or it's a base rating, so uh, that that's the reason why he's even on the team. If, if he's playing, he's, he's throwing the football. So, commission now, 
they're on the outside looking to get to the club, of, of, of the playoff club. Are we giving them any chance here, Iggy, to get themselves to four and six and maybe a playoff spot because they did beat uh, Vultures last week in a, in a pivotal matchup in Brossard. So are they still in that conversation? Or are we kind of writing them off given who they have left in their schedule? Well, let's not write them off just yet. You know, that's a pretty impressive uh, stop uh, or, or stop. I say stop because they stopped uh, Ben McMahon on the one-yard line twice to win the game. Um, so it's an impressive victory over Vultures. Now, looking at the rest of the schedule, you have the Penetradores. You could win that. That's a game they could win. Uh, it's their last game against Hot Sauce Sports. Hot Sauce Sports, even without Pease uh, Delores, who, who Eagle, will he be there on Thursday? No. I right? don't think I don't he think is. So. No, he, yeah, no, no, no. He's, yeah, he sorry. is drunk on some French Riviera right now, <laughs> just skinning himself I think he's, uh, did, did we GPS? Uh, did, can we can we ping him on his phone uh, and get his location? I think he's on you the know what? coast. If we call him up right now, yeah, he's I like think happy he right would... now. So it's uh, it's three, three a.m. No, we're not calling him. Yeah, it's three. No, it's three a.m. If we we're call him, I think he's up. Him. <laughs> I think he's up drunk right now. Could be. Um, but yes, uh, Hot Sauce Sports without uh, peas. They ended up beating the infantry uh, last week with Will Power uh, leading the charge. So that's that's the uh, the more difficult matchup of of the two remaining games uh, because the commission, like you mentioned, need to win out in order to uh, to even have a shot or smell at the playoffs. So I don't think they make it because of that hot sauce sports game. That's uh they they need to so they need to go score for score with hot sauce sports. And actually if you look at their schedule, they've actually held up uh, with every team they've played. They beat the infantry. Uh, they were a six point loss or seven point <laughs> loss to uh, Beer Belly. Uh, okay, ESU Timberwolves is a, a bit of a, a misnomer in their uh, in their whole schedule, but they were close against EZW, a five point loss. So they actually do tend to stay uh, and stick with within the the realms of a victory for all of their games. But I just see them not going score for score with Hot Sauce Sports. That's probably a six to seven point loss, if not more. So they they are in a in a pickle right now. They have they if you look at the roster right now for commission, they played a oh, lot of guys. Huge. Right now they have six guys eligible, which there could be two more. Mike Pearson and Kenny Boutoulier are both up four games. So if those guys, like I know B Raz play in Laval, I think tomorrow. I think that's the case tomorrow for games. So, in that case, if Commission were to qualify, uh, hopefully for Mike Pierce, he will be eligible. For Kenny Boutoulier, Boutoulier, he will be eligible because if they're not eligible, that six man roster might be a one and done because they need, they need Mike Pierce and his leadership skills for what he brings on the football field for that offense. Yeah, he's he's a difference maker for for their team, and yeah, absolutely, he'd have to pick and play uh, for the commission. Uh, again, we don't know if it's an exact uh, conflict, but uh, yeah, they definitely would be missing him if he's not there, and definitely need him for the victory. Well, just just to play devil's yeah. advocate, Mo, because you're Go saying that they're going to be uh, you know a six man roster and potentially a first round exit. L- let's assume they win both their games and they steal one of the last seeds uh, in this uh, in this division. Mm-hmm. So somewhere between 10th and 12th, right? That means yeah. they're playing the 5th, 6th, or 7th seed. Right now, right. that's Top Sizen, Ravens, and Vultures. <laughs> and arguably, oh Blitz Budge could maybe jump uh, fall down depending on what happens in the top season game if they get passed or whatever it is. Stoics can also potentially jump into that spot depending on what's going on. So, who, who, if any of those teams, do you think Commission has a chance against? Let's they might say, say they might say a, vultures. A proper roster. Forget the. They, they might say roster, vultures. Right? Though, they might say vultures because they they beat the vultures. So it, you know, it's, it's the whole mindset, right? That hey, we beat this team, we can beat them again. Yeah, and, I and that, I don't disagree. Yeah, it could be <clears> as crazy as that sounds. I mean, we also you know joked around on games of the week. We kind of laughed and picked vultures. We, we thought that would be an easy victory. Uh, look, that would test the skill set of the Vultures of how to game plan against a team that they faced before and see how they come out in the second. Yeah, but you game. know, you know what, Iggy? Like Vultures have been raw sewage for the last few weeks. 
They've like, been they what? have been they've been raw sewage for the last few weeks. Yeah, like they have been they haven't been great. Like, I mean, they, they played. Um, I know they had a doubleheader in Brossard, and they won their first game that they had, uh, which I scored kept. Um, yes, against and, one step closer. Yeah, exactly right. I was trying to, trying to forget the name, but anyway. Like they one step closer had a really good game plan against Benny McMahon, mm-hmm. where they had a rusher, and they had a spy on him, and it just it just felt like that he couldn't read the field going up against you know not one but two missiles coming at him, and and maybe that's some game plan for commission. I don't know. I, I didn't score keep the second game that they had that night, but but if you're gonna play the vultures, um, we 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 hyped them up. We we do that all the time. We we build teams up and we we crush them as soon as they go on a one game losing streak. But yeah, yeah. but that's now the nature it, of FPF. It's it's the nature of the beast of, of media. But but now for vultures, I'm not saying they're one and done here. But if they do, if if some of the commission by the good grace of the FPF gods get into the playoffs and they rematch it with the vultures, that's more of a of a 55 45 is not 53 47 ratio of how close that game is. Compared to before the last Thursday, where I thought and you thought and we both thought that the vultures would steamroll commission, but that was not the case. Yeah, and um, Eagle, I'll answer your question too. I don't think, uh, or I do think that the Stoics are actually a, a favorable. Maybe it's not favorable. It's not the right word, but a decent matchup for the commission. They they played recently uh, on July seventeenth. It was a one point. It was a one point victory for the Stoics. Uh, and the commission didn't have Mike Pierre saying there. So I think it's just it's a matchup that that's a good one for the commission in uh, in the Stoics. So Vultures, Stoics, that uh, those those could be favorable so, matchups. For the Stoics then, could he get to that top seven conversation or have they plateaued as a football team? Uh, eggs? Yeah, there was a kind of a quick uh, game of the week by Chris Rive. It seems like when uh, <laughs> when he's uh, filming himself, so to speak, uh, the game of the week goes up uh, in uh, in hyper speed there. But uh, so we we got a we got a glimpse of of that game of how it went down, and it didn't look great. Uh, it looked that when uh, an easy W defense. Uh, who's not known very very much to be a, a prolific defense um, gets well. It was it was sort of a prolific individual performance by Etienne Gervais. Uh, he had four interceptions uh, and one pick six on the night. Uh, but just something seemed off with with Chris Rive and uh, and his reads. So yeah, I'm not sure if they're starting to plateau. But the one game that was was posted didn't look great. Sorry, Chris. Hashtag go Stoics. Well, you know, they're they're now in the last <coughs> excuse me, five games. They're 0-3 or 0-4, I beg your pardon, uh, when games are decided by seven points or less. Um, uh, sorry, 1-3 and three when games are decided by seven points or less. And that one win came against commission with, by a single point. Right. So so are we to say for, for Chris Rive, who has playoff experience, hashtag go Stoics, uh, that maybe – they don't care where they finish. They just get into the tournament and yep. do damage then. That, that, I mean, that was kind of the case this point last year. Uh, they added Vincent Chung as a late uh, season uh, free agent acquisition. Uh, and I think they finished maybe in the sixth seed, so, somewhere around there, uh, kind of the lower seeds. And they ended up winning the uh, the Division D2 uh, championship. So yeah, maybe that's their their mindset going in is just get get in, get in, and then we'll see what happens there. So speaking of getting in, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, guys. Um, is it dry there too? <laughs> yeah, it is. Sorry, guys. My apologies, man. This mute, is, uh, mute, this... Mo. Uh, you can't do that. Though. I yeah, mean, technically no. he's muted, but I mean. Yeah. Anyway, this, I, I it... could do it. I mean, here, Mo. <laughs> now you, I can't hear you anymore. Mo, uh, Iggy can hear you, but I, I hear the stream him. can't hear you. Yeah. So oh, okay. this is what usually happens, by the way, when Iggy does a production. Scene. Yes, yeah, that's true. Anyway, uh, Blitzbuds top season. Um, yeah, both are really good teams. Uh, and Brett Blocking has confirmed, by the way, Eagle. So we'll go to them in ten minutes. Uh, do you see one of these teams falling out, falling out of the top seven? Uh, between Blitz, Buds, and Top Season. Top Season. 
Uh, falling out of the top seven. Well, look, uh, both uh, cannot uh, go lower than Ravens. Uh, nor can they go lower than Vultures, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, actually, top season because they have it gets a little more complicated. Fall out of the top seven? No, I'll say they uh, they stay above uh, the top seven or within the top seven. I don't know how you want to phrase that. Um, yeah, they're they're both really good teams, uh, both with uh, very strong quarterback play, uh, very strong receiver sets, and you know what, very strong defenses. So just they check off all, all, a lot of the boxes. Uh, give me them to stay up uh, up there. Maybe even and they'll stay in the four or five where they are. Yeah, I think I think blitz bloods are, are, are intriguing to me now. Um, you know, we haven't really, I mean, we spoke about them, but you know, we gave much love to infantry and they skunked it against hot sauce sports, hot sauce sports too, right? They, they've been growing it in, 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 uh, in the strength of the hurricane. Man, that, the number two seed, the number two yeah, seed. And, you don't, you usually think hot sauce sports, number two seed. So, uh, no, we think of hot sauce, we think of it and we think of peasy, right? And this, that's it, you know, but, but they're, they're a good team. They're, they're a really good team. Hot sauce sports and. And we always joke around with like we joked with the Eagle last season about him potentially winning a winter season and, and that didn't happen. This could be the best chance for PZ and for Hot Sauce Sports to come away with the championship. That means we lose PZ uh for the road show. And uh Eagle, do you know what time that the uh, division C uh final would, would be at? Uh as of right now, the division C final is the last game at eight ten. Okay, so perfect for PZ because he'll be yeah. you know, like he won't even bother with it. Like anyway. But I just think now for hot sauce, uh, you know what's what's below them are some really tough matchups potentially if they get far for, for the deep in the playoffs. I mean, Blitz sure. Bloods, not easy. Top season, not easy. Ravens, not easy. Vultures, they've been raw sewage, but you know we can't discount them. So it's going to be I think matchup dependent eggs on who they have in that next round of playoffs. Uh, whoever they face come round two or round one of their first game of playoffs that they have. Uh, next week yeah i'm not that plus minus is the end all and be all of all statistics but in the plus four just tells me that they're in a lot of close games i i know they got beat up by bliss buds uh like you mentioned that's a, a, a kind of a matchup nightmare for yeah. uh for hot sauce sports yeah so it's yeah <clears throat> i i think i think you're right i think it's matchup uh dependent uh on how far they'll go in the playoffs I just wonder for for top season, you know, with with McGrath's arm, how that how healthy is that going to be? Because when healthy, he's a really good quarterback, and he could put up some big time numbers. But, even at uh, seventy, I don't know what percentage I'd give him, but even at seventy or eighty percent, he looked good this season. Yeah, he he definitely did, and I just I just think if he's healthy. I think it makes a big difference for them uh, and whoever they have uh, in the playoffs, whoever they get in that first round of playoffs. So I, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by this division. And, you know, Iggy, uh, PZ made a good point, Iggy, that this is the most cluster bleep division that we have. It's crazy. And, and now, you know what? Throw, throw a monkey wrench into it. The number one seed in Easy W just lost their quarterback for the playoffs. So, like, now, hey, I'll throw this question out to you. Mo, like if you're one of that that Air Force One penetradores beer belly, are you kind of like hoping you're the last seed so that you get to play Easy W? Yeah, because Samuel Emilio Pauchat is has he's all right. A, <coughs> he has, but it kind of because because he's also he's also playing co-ed, right with with the, yes. with the Easy Fun team as well. Yeah, he's become. And to go old school quarterback, and for those who have YouTube, YouTube Rich Gannon Oaken Raider 2002 MVP season. He's become a dink and dunk quarterback. Like he's throwing three yard hooks, five yep. yard hooks. Yep. Look at game of the week. There was like a drive with three plays. Exactly. Hooks. So is he trustworthy to, you know, does he trust himself to throw the, the deep ball to kind of, you know, soft up a defense? I don't know. And that, might hurt them, maybe not in round one of their playoff adventure, but in rounds two and beyond, they could be uh, an early exit. And that's too bad because Jeremy White's a phenomenal athlete, a great quarterback uh, who's growing that into that position that may not be available for the playoffs. Yeah, to, to your point, it, it could even be in round one uh, where <clears throat> they, 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 they face up against a, a team that beats them. 
Yeah. As long as they play a good knowledge-based defensive team that can scheme and take away uh, what they're showing them in the first few drives. Uh, right, right. Things, teams like Hot Sauce Sports come to mind with that. Uh, Blitz Buds. Team, uh, obviously, they wouldn't necessarily play them in the first round. That would be a later right. round matchup. But if Beer Belly and uh, Tough Lungs can quickly adapt on the defensive side of the ball, uh, there could be an upset on ECW. Well, we'll be joined by Brett Bach, <laughs> Brett Bach in, in a couple seconds here as we move on to Division A and Division B. Um, so I to see now a, a clear path through uh, eggs with Div A. We know what the playoffs are going to be like. Um, quickly here, KGP, they kind of flubbed their ending, thinking that they were okay to get in the playoffs, but weren't, wasn't the case. So they're on the outs. Are you surprised by Apocalypse stealing the last playoff spot? And they are now in the tournament moving forward. I mean, they and KGP had to beat all stars for it, right? And they, you'd think normally a tie uh, against all stars <laughs> is like a pretty decent outcome, but uh, not necessarily the case. Yeah, uh, a little surprise that uh, that that's how uh, that the the apocalypse are the ones now uh, now in. At the same time, not super surprised. Uh, they well no they they beat the apocalypse had to beat mo cons mo problems on their way to doing that so you know what yes that that uh, was a surprise um from the apocalypse side but not a surprise that kgp uh uh ended up slipping out you know a tie against all stars like i said that's kind of like a moral victory but uh not enough to make a playoff uh, appearance apparently so they were like one five and two in games decided by five points or less this year at kgp that's crazy. Is it, is it is it their first time uh, playing in Division A and Division One? Because they have played Tier One in the Fall Cup, but is this their yeah. first crack at it? I'm not too sure about that, but I'll say this though: that in the last two games against All Stars, they lost by a combined three points. That's... You know, it's crazy. Like they they, they 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 they. In fact, if you go even back one week before that with yeah. Braves. They lost their the, – the last three games, they went 0-2-1. They lost by a combined score of six points. Yeah. I think they lost the season uh, in that Week 7 matchup against the quote-unquote Braves, uh, right. which weren't really the Braves. Uh, that's that's more disappointing from, uh, from that vantage point, uh, seeing that you're playing – I don't know. Did they underestimate the free agent squad of, uh, of Braves? Uh, it's that that's the one that hurts them the most. The one that they're going to look back on the season uh, and circle and be like, "Hey, this is the, the game we should have won." Yeah, we're we're gonna have to call Mo back because I uh, have to rejoin the room. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're gonna have to fix this. Give me. Uh, give you me have to rejoin here. the room. Yeah. It's so complicated. so you left the room. You no, left. No, it's Mo because Brent. Brent called me. Oh no! To then, why did he it call summoned you? me into the room, it's which is hilarious. Summoned you. Uh, so we'll have uh, Mo Khan back. We'll have uh, Brent Bakken uh, to give his insights into Division A as uh, as Eagle gets reconnected back into the room. What what kind of room are we in, uh, Eagle? It's a it's a messenger room. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to go like uh, the amusement, the the. What are those the rooms calls with the clues that you have to get out? The escape room. Escape room, yeah. Yeah, that, that was going in that direction. Uh, again, we're, we, uh, we had a... By the way, we had a cold open to start off the show. Uh, so if you were a little confused why we did that or why we didn't have an intro or why did we, we didn't talk about it, uh, we just wanted to change things up here a little bit. As, uh, as Do we have uh, Mo Khan back? He's back, coming yeah. back, yeah. We're back, baby. Hello, uh, Mokan. We also have you Brett Bakken now, who's joining us on the call. So, yeah. So I was just uh, explaining to the viewers that we had a cold open uh, to start the show. Uh, just if you were a little confused about that, uh, we'll, we will have an <laughs> intro though uh, to finish off. Yeah, that's it. Like, um, unfortunately, I'm under the weather. I have a have a size infection, so I'm at home. I want to be careful because, again, with Eagle and Iggy both in playoff um, scenarios, I don't want to get them sick in case. So, so you had to leave the room physically. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, that's it. It sucks. Like, I, I was fine, and then I felt it, like, last night afterwards when, when you and I worked together in Loyola and stuff and and all that. But uh, hopefully things are better me. now. You passed. You touched my football, and 
I'll have to go. I did touch your ball. Yes. I'll have to sanitize it. Yeah, exactly. Clean your ball. That's for sure. Uh, Eagle, are we joined by Brent Baca now? I believe so. Brent, can you hear us? I cannot hear Brent if he's speaking. It says, call Brent. Call Brent to join the room. Call. <laughs> Just call him. So we'll, we'll hopefully get Brent Bach in a few seconds here. He is ready to go. Uh, I did see him in the other chat room. So uh, we'll get that organized right now. As well. So yes, so, so Mo, we were just wrapping up uh, KGP yeah. uh, there. That, that I was just saying that the, they, if they were going to circle back one game uh, the, where they really should have won and, and uh, been a playoff team, it would have been the one against the uh, the the quote unquote yeah. Braves. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, so Brett Bach will join us in a couple of seconds here. So please bear with us as we get him back on the show and uh, get him on as. Uh, you might be seeing this on your screen of the mouse being utilized by Eagle and how this yes, is. You're absolutely did, seeing that right yeah. now. Did uh, exactly. Mo, Mo yes. uh, the, the other thing uh, the uh, from the apocalypse point of view, you, uh, were, you were you there to see that there's, I don't know, you wrote emotional win over. Uh, Mo yeah. Khan yeah. Emotional win for them because Jeff Rosenblatt played, played that game to perfection because MKM, he scored late and they gave up the two point convert. Because okay. he wanted the time plus plays. And so it was a yes. roll of the dice. They scored before five plays. So they, that was the roll of the dice that they gave five plays to to uh, to MKMP. And MKMP could not score from the midfield point. And wow. lose that game, which, which had a domino effect because had MKMP won, KHP would have jumped Apocalypse for the last spot. That wasn't the case now. And so on and so forth. Is, uh, is Brett Bakken now with us? I can hear you guys. I can see you guys. I can hear you guys. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes, uh, we can hear you, but yeah, thankfully, yeah, yeah, yeah. thankfully, we want to see your ugly face on the screen here, Brent. So it's perfect. <laughs> Video on. Gorgeous face and my gorgeous beard was on the screen. It'd be your honor, as would everybody else's. Continue on. Are you wearing you pants? Who you are. are you wearing yeah. pants for first, first and foremost? Are you wearing pants? It's, it's summertime. There's no need for pants in the summer. Come on. I can barely manage my shorts. You answered the question. Thank you. He wears his speedos out and about. I'm biking along the Lachine Canal. That's what he does. Uh, <laughs> so Brent, let's dive into it. Um, Division A. How surprised are you that Apocalypse jumped KGP for the final playoff spot? I'm not totally surprised. I mean, the Apocalypse. Listen, they have a talented team. You look, you look at the roster, right? Like a lot of experience, a lot of championship experience. They had, uh, I believe, Paul Lapierre for them this past week. I mean, uh, that's big. The man's a Hall of Famer. He knows how to get the ball in the weapons' hands. KGP hasn't been KGP-esque this season. They're, they're losing a lot of close games that they would usually win. They, I called them uh, in the playoffs this past winter season, the Cardiac Kids, and they've been the total opposite of that this uh, spring slash summer season. And, I mean, you look at the record, 2-6-2. Two, and two. I mean, yeah, it is a jump, a big jump from Division uh, 2 or Division B to Division A, but – the fact that they only came away with two wins, uh, I think that speaks volumes. And you look at the Apocalypse, I mean, obviously they, they have one more win. They've been in a lot of close games. You, you look at their second half of the season, they've lost, uh, they're two and three in the second half, right? Two big wins, obviously, the, the last one just this past week. But the three losses that they've had in the second half of the season have come by a combined, I believe, six points. So it's not a surprise to me that the Apocalypse were able to jump KGP for that playoff spot. Yeah, uh, Brent. You know, speaking of the uh, the apocalypse, so and 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 the close games in which they lost, uh, and then combined with their couple of victories to end the season, uh, do you see them as a dark horse to maybe upset uh, the All Stars, the Braves, uh, or Party Crashers? I mean, I, I've written the last couple articles. They're, they're a team that they, they definitely could be a dark horse. I don't know about upsetting upsetting the All Stars. Listen, I mean. You look at their their the roster, at least a receiver, James Tyrell, James O'Hayan, O'Hayan, pardon me, Marty Freeman, Sanders Ahmed, even Kendall Myers comes out and helps out the offense, Raul Brody. A lot of good a lot of good players, a lot of household names for FPF, but are they good enough to knock off the All Stars? I don't think so. The Braves if they able to get their full squad in no. Do I think they can knock off the party crashers? Yeah, percent I think they can. And party crashers are a team that I like, but I think that the the apocalypse from top to bottom have a, a better team than the, than the party crashers who can be at times top heavy. Um, but to answer your question, no, I don't think, I think they can give the all-stars a run for the money. A hundred percent. I mean, uh, listen, 
they they had to get two big wins to get into the playoffs. They weren't able to do, to do that the last couple of weeks. The apocalypse. Do I think they can knock off the All Stars in the playoffs? No, I don't think so. So, Brent, pretend you're your car salesman. Convince me why MKMP can make it to the finals. The top quarterbacks in, in in all of FPF, obviously, their their offense and their defense starts and ends with AJ. Um, but they do they do have a talented and deep roster. I mean, listen, they they won the 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 spring championship last season, obviously under a different name. This year, I mean, they're under 500. They have the the, the Moncod curse of, of not being a winning team. That that's the Moncod curse. Um, can they win it all? They can. They can. They have to get a lot of breaks. They got to protect the ball. They, they have to come out defensively and get stops, right? Especially if they face the All Stars. Uh, if they go against the Braves, they have to get stops consistently, um, and they have to make sure every time they have an opportunity to score. They do. Their offense has been a bit up and down this year. They haven't been as as efficient or, or as prolific, if you will, as we've seen in the past by a down there that offense. Um, do I think if you put me on the spot right now, do I think they can win the championship this year? No. They have the talent, but I just don't think they'll be able to pull it off. Brent, man, your sales manager is going to hate you. Like, it sounds like you don't, you don't want me to buy this car. Like, come yeah, on, the man. The brakes are like, bad. Don't buy this car. The brakes will be shot in, like, five minutes you know, of driving. You know, if car. you really ask me, you don't want this car. <laughs> That's no, how you, you don't want it. this car. You, you want this BMW gotta... Beetle. <laughs> That's what you want in this Montreal weather. Okay, they can. Like I said, they, they can. They have, the, they have the talent to do it. Whether they do it or not, I don't know. But they, they have the talent to do it, yes. They, no, no, it's, want, it's too late. It's too late. I'm going trip. across the street. You, yeah, you I'm going to buy chance. an Audi now or something or a Tesla with Eagle now. So there goes the hopes <laughs> over there. Um, uh, Iggs, go ahead, man. No, no, no. Go, go, go. Go for it. I was going to say, party crashers. I mean, there's sort of been <laughs> – sorry. There's sort of been a team that has been unpredictable or, or Fred Dupuis – can light it up and then he can blow it up on himself, right? So, so can we take party crashes as a serious threat to the top two of All Stars and Braves going towards the playoffs, Brent? I mean, so it's interesting that you asked me that question. I had a conversation with a member from the All Stars and a member of the Braves last week, and they both told me they don't think the party crashers and Fred Dupuy could lead into a championship. They, 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 they didn't fear the team. They, they thought that Dupuis himself was a great quarterback, but he just threw deep too much. Um, they feel that they're, like I mentioned before, a bit of a top-heavy team. You look at the roster, they have a lot of names on the roster, but in terms of guys who truly, truly make an impact, um, I don't know. It, it's a good question. Like I, I, wrote, I remember writing about these guys last season, and they were one of my favorite. I mean, they have Anthony Brisbois, who I, I think, hands down, should be the two-way player of the year uh, again. And, I mean, you, you have guys like him, Emile Talafier, uh, Francois Ho. They, they, had, they had the firepower to get it done. I just think when push comes to shove, they fall in love too much with the deep ball. And their, off, uh, their defense, pardon me, which I, I, I wrote even in multiple columns in the winter season, they gave up the deep ball too much. So can they hang with the All-Stars and, 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 and the Braves? Certainly. They can hang with them, but in terms of putting them away in crunch time, I don't know. They they have a a, a week uh, two victory over the Braves, where it was a shootout, fifty eight to fifty. Uh, after that, I mean, the All Stars put up forty one points. The Braves only put up twenty six against the Apocalypse in a big game this past week. They only got eighteen points. The Apocalypse scored twenty. So I mean, it's they're they're at their best when they're in a shootout. But against a team like the Braves and the All-Stars, you have to get stops. And I just don't think the party crashers can consistently, when the money's on the line, get stops late in the game. On to Division B. Uh, Iggy, so you want to jump in there? Go no, ahead. No, 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 no. No, let's go to Division B. Division B. Uh, sorry, uh, Brent. So on to Division B, how surprised are you that the solid ticklers are going to be your number one seed after pulling off the smasher grab over b Rabs? I mean, if you were to ask me... Week one, week two, week three, I would have said absolutely not. I mean, listen, they have a lot of talent on that team. But their their turnaround in the second half of the season has been phenomenal. I mean, listen, they had that big win over the, the, the B-Ravs, the B-Rays. I always bug my pee about that. Um, I'm not surprised. Cause, I mean, look, they, they have a, a, a two-headed monster at quarterback with Jordan Panetta and, and Raji, obviously. They have a lot of skill. They have a lot of talent at the skill positions. They, they can get stops on defense. I'm, I'm not surprised. I mean, the b Rabs. listen, I mean, they have a couple of losses on their schedule that really shouldn't be there because they had uh, substitute teams, if you will. 
Well, if you want to look at the best team, top to bottom, it is still the B Rabs. Let's, let's let's call a spade a spade. But I mean, it is what it is, right? Silent Ticklers, they 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 hasn't been a hotter team. I don't think in the second half of the season. When you look at all Division B teams, and again, they they have another game on the schedule. They have a game coming up, I believe, against uh, the Moretti Crime family. Yep. Uh, I expect the Silent Ticklers to get the W there, and I think they'll be able to hold on to that top spot in Division B. So to answer your question, and also a little long-winded. I'm not surprised that they're the, the top team right now in Division B, at least during the second half of the season. First half, again, they started off with a, with a pretty bad record. So it, it is a bit surprising, I guess you could say. So being that they're, they they kind of went on a hot streak and that uh, they've wrapped up the, the number one seed, they did it, though, yesterday with Paul Pierre throwing. Uh, Jordan Panetta was available and was at the game, played receiver. So... Beating the B Raves by two, but with Paul Lapierre, who has one game played and won't be playoff eligible for them, uh, what do you think that that mean? Is there is it a meaningful victory over B Raves? Is it like because come playoff time, Paul Lapierre is not going to be there to throw, and Jordan Panetta won't be a receiver, right? Or maybe a receiver if 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 Rossi's throwing. I mean, I don't, I don't know. The last time I talked to Rob was yesterday. I don't think he's bought in any regular season. Uh, banners, so I mean, <laughs> all that came on through for them, and they, 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 I guess you could say they won the regular season title. That's that's fantastic. But in the playoffs, they're gonna need, I guess, either Rajji or, or or Jordan to throw. And I, I don't think it makes much sense to have Paul throw if you have Jordan right there to throw as quarterback. And if anything, that can give him a little test. Uh, playing against that defense, give him a little test in the regular season because obviously. Chances are they're gonna to have to play them in the in the exactly. postseason. So no, I, I don't think it made much sense. I mean, in, in the big picture, great. So they finished first place. That's fantastic. Doesn't really matter. I, I could tell you t- talking to guys like Mike and Nat. I'm sure he doesn't care. I'm sure Joe Mayu doesn't care. Guillaume Bella. I'm sure those guys don't really care that they, they didn't win first place for Division B in the regular season. Eagle. Uh, Brent, we look at the the teams below. <clears throat> Silent Ticklers, Thor, ha- Thor's Hammer, and B Ravs. Is there a dark horse team that you're circling on your on your calendar to say, yeah, this team can make some serious damage in the playoffs next week? I mean, I can't I can't say like Thor's Hammer is a dark horse. Listen, I mean, they're, they're a great team. Um, a brand new, obviously, with Robbie Robinson. I mean, he's he's a, he's been a stud. He's a Hall of Famer. He's been a set of multiple multiple positions. Obviously, quarterback. Uh, I think the Moretti crime family. Listen, they have Joey Taylor. I mean, he still throws. I think the ugliest ball in, in the history of FPF. But the man winner, he gets it done. They have a deep team. Joe Malkin, Don yeah. Benavent, obviously, <laughs> like that's a team who at times they look great, at times not so much. But when they're on, they're on on both sides of the ball, and they're going to be a dangerous team, I think, come playoff time. So if I have to put my money on one dark horse team to win or not, I'd have to say the, the Moretti Crime Family. And I'm not guaranteeing they're going to win, but if I have to pick a dark horse, I, I think it has to be them. Thanks. No, I think Eagle. Did you want to say something before? Uh, no, only that. I was going to try and compare all these teams to cars, but uh, we've already accepted the fact that Brent won't sell me anything, so we can move on. <laughs> Eagles are already at the Tesla store. So, so Brent, uh, in, in your mind, uh, what would be your uh, Division B dream uh, playoff matchups here? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, let's see here. b Rams. I like brand new. Um, can to throw it out there right now? Uh, I'm gonna say the B Ravs against Thor's Hammer. Yeah, B Ravs and Thor's Hammer. Because I mean, they they played a few weeks ago. I mean, obviously that was an asterisk beside that 46, 26 victory for Thor's Hammer. Because again, most of the B Ravs weren't there. Right. Uh, See that that matchup when you know all the chips are on the line, everything counts. Uh, so yeah, in the playoffs, yeah, that would that would be my dream matchup. I, I would say a close second though to brand new and the silent ticklers. I think that would be a pretty interesting matchup on playoff time. But yeah, uh, yeah, throw time in the B Rabs. So yeah. what right. I find interesting about those answers is that if you actually look at the uh the B Rabs schedule, that was their first game against Brand New, right? And uh, they ended up winning fifty eight to thirty four. You can make an argument that Brand New was still kind of like learning their parts, getting back into the rhythm of things, versus B Rabs were kind of like a well oiled machine for that game. But that's obviously like 
what I'll describe as pre-injury or pre-roster issues that B-Ravs were having. And then over time, Brand New has obviously solidified themselves as a, a front runner in this division. So going from June 5th to August 14th, that's a lot of time to evolve as a team. So I, that would be very interesting from my perspective for uh, a rematch, which you could argue is probably a brand new game. And, and you know who knows who's going to be the winner in that one. Yeah, that's it. One hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. That, that's it. That that's honestly why I chose them second. I mean, I, I want to see if uh, Thor's hammer against the B Ravs when everyone is there, but like I said, uh, the, the the brand new matchup, uh, like it, it adds a lot of intrigue. I I, I think. I mean, <laughs> team, like we said, like you said yeah, earlier in the season, they, they were brand new to to to, to use the pun. Like, they were still trying to figure things out. Whereas now, chemistry is built, cohesion is built. So I think it's a completely different team. Yeah, and, uh, and to, to kind of get to your point there, uh, B-Ravs have played uh, Thor's Hammer twice. Uh, Thor's Hammer beating them in Week 7, 46-26, and then also playing them in that Week 1 matchup and only losing by a single point, 32-31. So I think Thor's Hammer come out of uh, that matchup ahead versus, I think, brand new. Uh, they they might be able to surprise b Rav here in terms of what they've actually been able to do over the season. Yep. Uh, before we get you out of here, Brett, uh, does JYD have a chance to jump Mangoose for the last last playoff spot? So, I mean, normally I, I would pick, you know, I, I'm a Jason Rossi fan. He's a great guy, <laughs> better and experience on his team. But, I mean, they're playing the, the, the B-Ravs. Let, let, let's be real, right? Do you think they're going to face a B-Ravs team who's just going to lay down and be like, all right, let's get ready for the playoffs? Or are they going to face a B-Ravs team who's pissed off a little bit that they lost to the silent ticklers and maybe people were downing them. I think it's going to be the latter. And I hate to say it, but I don't think JY is going to catch the, the Mangoes. And the Mangoes, listen, I, I, that, that's the team who's impressed me. I mean, they're, they're coming off a loss, but they're a team who's impressed me that over the second half of the season. They lost a couple of tough games. But listen, it's only two wins get you in. And I just don't see JYD getting that second win, which they would desperately need to jump Mangoes. Well, they actually, you know, they're only one point behind, but. I just don't think they're gonna. They're gonna. Yeah, pardon me. I don't think they're gonna get it done because of who they're facing. Brett Blocken, thank you so much. Uh, when will your article be uh, released before we head to the playoffs? Wait, today, Thursday. Uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday. I'm going to try to get it out Saturday night or very, very late as Sunday morning. But I'm aiming for Saturday night right now. Uh, by then, maybe the Knicks have acquired Donovan Mitchell. Listen, don't get me started, Mo. Don't get me started, okay? You and your one and done in the playoffs team. Don't worry. My next one. Yeah, I, I next... didn't say anything. No. Look at Mo trying to get you all riled up as uh, as you're uh, ending, ending the conversation. I said, I said something nice about the next. Maybe they get Donovan Mitchell and he gets upset. He doesn't get me riled up because it's, it's Mo Khan. Mo, listen, everyone needs to know. Mo Khan cheers for horrible teams. The Florida Marlins. Uh, Not the Tron- Marlins. Not the Marlins. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Miami Marlins, Florida, doesn't matter where they want to be in, this, in the great state. This, in the sense. It, they still stink. I mean, let, let's be real. The Chicago Bulls, the Detroit Red Wings, really? Really? When's the last time they made the playoffs? I don't know. Five, six, seven, eight, ten years ago, maybe? Something like that? Sorry, Mo. Mo, Mo toss a lot of trash. Mo toss a lot of trash for a guy who cheers for horrible teams. The Raiders? I'm going to say it right now. The Las Vegas, should still be called the Oakland Raiders, will not finish higher than third in the AFC West. I'm calling it right now. You heard it here Fourth. first. Fourth. Fourth? Good man. Jeez. <laughs> okay, good luck there, Jimmy G. Yeah, sure, sure, Brent. Uh, I, I think Iggy has more quarterback uh, throws than Jimmy than uh, Trey Lance has had the last few years. Derek Carr and Iggy, so it's okay. It's all good. I'm sure. I rather think Iggy is my quarterback than Trey Lance. On that note, Brent, thank you so much for joining us, my friend. Thanks, Brent. Thank you. Right. Later, boys. Be good. Later, Brent. Brent Bakke, you can read his article. Dave, a, be over the weekend at some point, either Saturday if not the Sunday morning, uh, to get your uh, dose of Dave to be. As we now move towards Div D, we should be joined by Alexis Dubois uh, at some point as well. He'll join us here to do co-ed to wrap it up. All right, so Div D, Ig, so so a lot going on right now. A lot to kind of um, break down here. Yep. V-Town forfeit uh, their game, which was a surprise to many, including us that were in Loyola yesterday. How surprised were you that that happened for them? Yeah, shocked. I mean, we were going in, we were choosing our fields to score keep with precision uh, based off of uh, the fact that that uh, V-Town kind of, they had to win the game in order to give themselves a shot at the playoffs. I don't know. Did they think they were already eliminated? I don't know. Did they see the red in their name and, and just kind of think it was over? 
I don't know. Either way, you shouldn't be just forfeiting uh, your games, and especially as a no-show. Um, so, yeah, very, very disappointed in that one. And uh, as were the Bandits, honestly, uh, it's, it's, it's our privilege to be able to voice, uh, have our vo- voices heard on calling the audible and the bandits yeah. weren't happy. They, they, they wanted to play. They, they, you know, they, they have uh, a player of the year awards on the line. They, they wanted a victory. They wanted the reps. They, they, they wanted to play, you know, in, in, in every sense. Yeah. It, it's disappointing, man. I, 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 and I, and I apologize profusely to the bandits when I saw them yesterday saying that guys, I apologize. I mean, it sucks because you're the seven o'clock game, you know, midweek traffic, and you yeah. come and there's no one there. You know, it's not for you guys, and you guys deserve better than that. And I apologize to them for that. And it's too bad. Um, it's your but fault. Mom. It is my fault, no question. But that that opened it up for Blue, Blue Dreamers though to sneak in as the seventh seed, and they won a very chippy affair against um, former All Stars mm-hmm. to get that seventh seed. So how impressed are you that Blue Dreamers get that last golden ticket and are now in the playoffs? So they're there right now, but they haven't clinched a playoff spot yet. Right. Uh, they they absolutely needed the win. They got it, uh, and like you said, in a, in a somewhat chippy affair and a tight battle uh, against former All Stars. But the job's not done. Uh, There's still Tim Team Timbo. Uh, ah, has, you bleeped <laughs> up. You bleeped up. It, it happened at least once every week. It's, it was the <laughs> uh, the theme of of this year's calling the audible. Uh, Team Timbo still have one game left. On their schedule, uh, they have currently have seven points. Uh, I believe the tie is not good enough either. They cannot tie the game. They cannot lose the game. They must beat. Uh, as I just bring it up, I think Tim uh, <laughs> Team Team Timbo is playing uh, the Mighty Six. So not a not an easy uh, not an easy matchup against the five three and one Mighty Six currently uh, holding the number five spot. We're also playing for uh, for playoff positioning, right? You want to finish as high as possible so you uh, you don't face the toughest competition earlier early on in your in your playoff run. Yeah. So. Uh, so, but, uh, speaking about, uh, blue dreamers, yeah, it was, a. Uh, they, they look much, much better under Matthew Simard, uh, at quarterback. Uh, they were, they were guys on the sideline. They were like, who who's that Matt or Pat, you know, uh, running around scrambling in the back, uh, in, in, in the backfield, throwing lasers and, and darts. Uh, they, they look, uh, like a much different team when he's the quarterback. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think they look much more, um, dynamic. No? Yeah, there's more dynamism to their offense uh, than it was before. I mean, <clears throat> to give you an example, uh, and I apologize for sounding so nasally, I have a science infection. Um, there was a play in the second half, or in the oh. first half. Describe well, this. It was, a, it was awesome. I was looking over yeah, my so shoulder. Yeah, so they're starting from the 10-yard line, and so it was a bad snap over the head. Now, did he the touch reaction, it? Yeah, did he the touch reaction, it? Well, I'll explain right now. So the reaction yeah. from 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 All Stars is that it should have been a safety. Well, he touched it to keep the play alive, right? So ball goes over his hand. He touches it. He saves it from going out of bounds. Back saves it, saves play. it from going in the back of the end zone as well yeah. for safety. Yeah, exactly. Continue. And then essentially what happened was back towards the play. He turns around. He has a split second. He launches a a a, a pop fly to deep center field. Caught by his player for a 30-yard game. So what could have been a loss of 10 and a loss of two points ends up being a 30-yard gain on a on a on an improv by Simar to keep that play alive and essentially keep their season's hopes alive by making that play over from all stars. Yeah, I mean the the just the swing of of events that that could have happened on that on that one play like like you just said yeah. lost not not just losing 10 yards losing possession of the ball uh which is probably the most important thing because they ended up winning by nine points so that yeah in the, in the end the two points wasn't uh wasn't so critical but you know give two points uh to to former all-stars it's now a seven point game and they get an extra possession to try and score. If they do score, you know, you go for one, you go for the tie, or if you go for two, you, you go for the win. Instead, it w- it ended up being a, a two possession. So yeah, that that they was won by nine points. Yeah, exactly. So so uh, that that definitely was uh, a key uh, kind of 
FPF moment, a critical moment of the game there. Um, but yeah, the the Blue Dreamers just yeah, like 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 we were talking about, a lot more dynamic with uh, with Simard at, at quarterback. Now I don't know if Anthony Lazara is going to be playoff eligible. He had three touchdowns in the game. Uh, was huge for uh, for their victory over over former All Stars. Yeah. Uh, he's not playoff eligible. Neither is Anthony Cigia. So did they did they stack? "Quote unquote," the roster legally, uh, as they. Uh, I'm gonna just check if they fit the cap, but uh, let's just say they did. Um, look, CJ won't be available for playoffs, and neither will Anthony Lazara. So, did they put the best roster available to uh, to beat former All Stars, and and that's how they did it? Well, they uh, souped it up, right? They souped it up to to win that game, which they did. Yeah. But now, the, the, the first off, they have to confirm their playoff acceptance if they do get in. With some help along the way with with uh, Team Timbo, uh, if they were to win or lose coming up in, in the next 24 hours, so that's gonna be fascinating to see how this plays yeah. out. And brings up brings up my next point with former All Stars and say Threat Live a Midnight. <clears throat> if you had to put your money now on one of these teams here, uh, Eggs, who is going deeper in the playoffs come next week? You know your answer, uh, my my your answer. My, oh, I'm tired. It's hot in here, Eagle. By the way, the fan <coughs> isn't on. Um, uh oh, uh, Diva's asking for the fan to be on. <laughs> you realize it's under your feet, right? I don't know where the switch it's is. Fine, it's fine, I'll huge. get it. It's I see huge. how it is. Uh, I want you underneath me at all times, Eagle. Um, he didn't I've hear heard that. that before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, your my answer might surprise you. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go former All Stars. Um, even really? though, yep, even though Threat Level Midnight is a more experienced team, uh, have more FPF veterans. Uh, I've former All Stars have been on a on a hot streak. Other than last night's loss, um, I think we were talking on the on the sidelines, Mo. If you don't have a decent to a average to above average rusher, uh, Alex Papineau is going to make you pay. He's going to make you pay by uh, running around in the backfield, uh, doing his improv plays. Uh, their receivers get open. They're they're very good at uh, evading uh, close uh, shadow defense or man defense uh, once the play kind of breaks down. Uh, and if not, Papino can can take really get the edge around a a, a below or subpar uh, rusher yeah. and really get to the sideline. And his speed is deceiving. He doesn't look very quick, but. After seeing him run a couple times, I'm like, no, this this guy's fast, so he has wheels, so he can make you pay. Uh, and that that kind of improv danger is just uh, so hard for a defense to adapt to and 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 get to like defend. It's just really hard to defend. Well, to return your your, your first serve over here, yeah. Um, Samar took him out. Um, yeah, out I of saw his that comfort level, and, and so Papno did not. Have a counter punch to that return shot from from Samard, and he had a couple of plays like he had, he got called for intentional grounding not once but could have been called two if not three times. So now for former All Stars, they got to figure out the adjustment to make their their offense a little bit more um, uh, with with the safety valve with with the, with the safety break in place because you don't have that and <clears throat> they got exposed a little bit by Blue Dreamers yesterday, and you know. This is a team that was in Division Two in winter season, uh, and then we're at, <coughs> excuse me, we're at the weight class for where they were supposed to be. Yeah, but now they finally found the proper uh, division to be in, and they've been much more competitive. But if they want to take that next step, though, Papano's got to be a better quarterback in pocket and yes. make those not passes, but make those throws. That's going to win you a championship. Uh, agreed. Although my last comment for yesterday's game, they were missing their number one receiver in Stefano De Seta. Uh, he, the guy runs crisp routes, great hands. Uh, so maybe the pocket presence of Papino would be better with uh, Stefano De Seta in the lineup. Could be, could be. But but I just <coughs> sorry guys, I just think that for for this side of the division here, and again, if you look at the playoff bracket that we have for them, it's gonna be playoff matchup dependent on who they get. You know, and, and in the case that they're in right now, Eggs, I don't know who we can say for from all stars can be a good matchup for them that, that they can win that easy outright. And, and, and to remind everyone on the playoff format here, right? Top six from each of the conferences 
qualify for playoffs. He's got to move the, next... the, the, the you got you got to move the picture of where the graphic is there. You can, uh, I mean, it's... it's all the teams in green that are currently like officially in. So top I know, six but for the, make for, it for the bracket though, right? If you want to see the bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there, Mo. He's Come, eager. Come you know. like, He's we'll eager. get there. So top six teams from each conference get there. Yeah. Then it's next best two. Currently, uh, Blue Dreamers and Wide Open Bar, but we talked about Team Timbo being able to pass Blue Dreamers if they win right. tomorrow night versus Mighty Six. And then from that point onwards, the one seeds, so currently uh, Kiss My Vulture, Killer Rays, and Fourth and Schlong, assuming yeah. tie breaks work out and everything, right. will take uh, one, two, three seeds. And then the next best team... Currently tied between Dirty Dogs and Peerless Scarred. We'll have to tie break that to be sure. Would get the fourth uh, seed. And those would jump directly into the next round. So seed one, we have seed four, we have seed three, and we have seed two. Everyone else is then ranked top to bottom in whatever order they are in based on the points and the usual tie breaks and everything. And then you work your way through a true bracket format. So whoever wins 16-17 plays 1, whoever wins 13-20 plays 4, whoever uh, wins 14-19 plays 3, and whoever wins 15-18 plays 2. The others, they jump around, essentially get into the, the second column here. So uh, there is a lot of movement that's still to happen wow. depending on yeah. you know where you're going to finally end up when we all when all the teams are done with their 10 games. It, it, this is the – I know it's, a, it's like a Big Mac of, of a bracket here. Or, or like, or like a T-bone steak of what we have, but I'm really fascinated yeah. by this bracket yeah. format. Yeah. So, so out. one thing we've talked about Mo is, and, and I was actually talking with Rob about it earlier today. Do you remember me, ten years ago? I think is probably where we're at, where you had like the Cinderella run of like an eight or seven seed who would beat yeah. the one seed, beat the two seed, beat the three seed, make it to the finals essentially. Um, right. That's very hard to do in today's version of FPF, right? Because you literally have to go through all the monsters to yeah. get there. And you could say it was easier in the past because, well, there were less teams overall. So maybe the best team just got the easiest schedule versus everyone else. Versus now, like, in order to get those hard games, it's much more tricky to do. So we like the idea of the bracket because it adds for more, I guess, storylines, right? Like, you can beat the one seed. And then have an easier run through the rest of the bracket because you beat the one seed. That is your reward, essentially, right? You still yeah. had the hard match matchup, but you won that game, and therefore you move forward. Versus, you know, beforehand that was like very difficult to do. So, brackets, I think, is going to be the new standard moving forward when we have more than eight teams that are going to make playoffs potentially in a conference or otherwise. Um, and then otherwise, like we'll do reseed for other stuff, but this is probably going to be like a, a new thing. So we'll see how the feedback is and, and what the, the matchups look like and see, you know, where we need to make adjustments for it. No question. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to see how this plays out for this division here as well. Um, eggs quickly before we go on to, uh, what we have here, Santar, they're five and two, <coughs> excuse me. They're five and two since they're zero and two start. Are you starting to believe this team has turned the corner to become more of a threat in this division? I mean, they have a roster now, so what What does that mean? Well, in their first few games, I mean, they were basically not putting up any points at all. Uh, they weren't uh, – th right. their roster was very inconsistent. Like, right. it was different players every week. And then suddenly they started putting actual players together, a team together. Uh, Hugo Alamano has stepped into his own as a quarterback as well. I don't, I don't like – no. I don't. No, he, he had a rough go. Like, yeah. he, he he's not a quarterback. but No. But I mean, as compared no. to the first few games, though? Well, I, I scored cap uh, the Killer Rays game in Laval. I think that's week two, two week two, week three, whatever it was. But, week two. And, it, and Pease and I have spoke about it, and I said, Pease, man, I, I don't trust this team. But they're now 5-2 and two since being 0-2. Right, so Eagle's point is he's playing better. But I don't trust them, though. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> That's why. That's the I whole mean, thing, right? I mean, I mean, the thing is, and I saw, so I saw, uh, I mean, I, I played a, a, a against him as well, not on defense per se, but uh, our team did. And then I saw him play uh, a matchup against Ghosts uh, at Brossard. Now, Ghosts, I believe, 0-10 or 1-9, yeah. uh, one, one of the bottom feeders, uh, and they only won 15-12. to 12. Now, I will say that uh, good the good and bad side. So when you have Will Power as one of your receivers, uh, that can change a lot. The, <coughs> the, the negative side, of course, is that 
the ball's going Will Power's way, like 15 targets a game. So uh, from a defensive uh, game plan standpoint, uh, you put your best defender on Will Power. Is that good enough? Not always. Uh, but, you know, do you even double cover him? Maybe just uh, shadow his zone, like uh, really, really force uh, the ball not to go to Will Power. Uh, and then you, you've, you have you've increased your odds of winning the game by right. a significant number. Yeah, I, I just think that there is a, like a, um, a, a, there's a gap of talent yes. um, <clears throat> when you look at Will Power being what he is, but then you know Chris Brockwell, you know he's not Will Power, but he can still get you those uh, those tight end yards, right? He's building yep. a tight end out there. But after that, though, who, who's stepping up? I don't yeah. see anyone else on this roster stepping up here Iggs, to, to make a threat and be, become a be, – go from being a duo to becoming a tripod of receivers for them. No, uh, that's it. I mean, it was supposed to be Jordan Rossi, right? But now he, he – okay, they have one game left, or have they played all ten? They have one game left, and he's played four. So if he plays the next one, he's playoff eligible. I thought he was a full-timer on the team. It seems like he's in and out. Uh, I mean, then you're you're put looking at Michael Michael Brockwell or or An An Antonin Coty as uh, as your number two receiver. So that's very questionable going in uh, into the playoffs for me. Yeah, uh, there's there's more questions about them now than before, and they'll get selling all boys uh, on Thursday. Hopefully, they show up. I hope they show up. Yeah, please show up. I hope they show up, please, please. You know, but anyway, we'll find out. Uh, I think we'll be, we will be joined by Alexi Dubois. So you go try to locate. We him will now. unfortunately not be joined by Alexi Dubois. He's currently in meetings. Apparently, I don't know what uh, world issue he's solving today. Whether it's hunger, poverty, uh, pandemic. Uh, maybe Ukraine. he's renegotiating the Geneva Convention. Who knows? Or maybe negotiating with Russia for the USA. I don't know. Maybe that could be the case right now. Who knows? But uh, so we won't be joined. So next week we'll be joined by Lexi Dubois and we'll, we'll get to co-ed. So let's dive into co-ed as we wrap it up here, Iggs. Um, look, here's something that I brought up that, that I was thinking about it before. Easy fun. We spoke about the, 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 um, the higher division team. Yeah. They were in control of their division for the last X amount of weeks. Mm -hmm. And they lost their last two games. Are you worried about easy fun going into the playoffs? Uh, yes. Uh, and, and it's both for the quarterback rotation reasons, uh, but as well as the other teams gaining steam, uh, teams like, uh, uh kiss my outlaws, even uh fit squad has put together a few string, a uh, few wins in a row, including win victories over easy fun. Uh, so the landscape of co-ed one, has significantly changed with the loss of Jeremy White and Easy Fun has uh, dropped. Uh, if if I had to make some power rankings for Coed One, uh, they would be the team uh, trending downwards. Yeah, I, I think they are trending downwards. Um, I score kept their game that they had on Monday in Papineau, and this is a team that looks a little disillusioned uh, with their offensive play call that they have. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, lose it to LPP as he did. Uh, it wasn't even close. The game was not even close. But even though the scoreline finished being a two-score win, they were down nineteen nothing, and and they just couldn't get it going at all. And Samuel Emilio Pelshat is a guy that we all like a lot here, but you can just see he's not Jeremy White. And you can just see his 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 play selection, his yards per play is a lot smaller of bandwidth than what Jeremy does as a quarterback, and that's going to hurt them in the playoffs, and I just don't know. They, they, this, this might be a one-and-done team going into the playoffs come next week. Yeah, it, it, it could be, and that would be quite the storyline because Easy Fun, of course, was in the Coed 1 final in, uh, in the winter season, of course, coming up just a bit short. Uh, so a quick early exit from the spring season playoff. It'll be stunning. Uh, it'll, be, yeah. it'll be stunning if he lost. Exactly. Yep. It would be very stunning if he lost. And it'd be dis disappointing because I think, you know, as a team, and no pun intended to the name, they are a fun team to watch. You know, and, and mm -hmm. to, to not be in that conversation with Kiss My Outlaws, um it it, it I might, again, whatever reason that Jeremy White can't be there, it is what it is. But it would be disappointing that they can't go further than what they should be doing right now. 
Right. And do you find that, I mean, based on the stat line from that Monday night game in Papineau, uh, that one of the downfalls of, uh, of San Pelcha is that he's not uh, necessarily targeting or uh, getting the, the receptions from, his, uh, from the women players on the team. It looks like he's leaning towards Jeremy White, Nicole Blé, Sio Leving, which I don't blame him. These guys are amazing football players. But when it comes to the women... Yeah, you have women, to incorporate the female content that you have in the roster, which uh, yeah, he's going to have to yeah. figure it out. It's like, look, they're down their 10-game schedule. So there's no more figuring out, man. You need to know what you have. And you need to utilize the, the the root one option, which is to get the ball to your best players, but don't forget your female content that can get you a big catch at the crucial moment. So you know, he, and, and and you know what, Mo, I because we we kind of recycle what we say about coed, and we always say you got to get the women involved. I'll take it one step forward. It's not just getting them involved. I find, especially playing in co-ed as quarterback now, it's different. The quarterback <laughs> is, is, is a different world. Yeah. And you see the game from a different perspective. I find that if you can get hit your girls on deep balls, that's where they not only are like, that's not, it's not just the short game where they need to be implicated and, and can get yards. It's the deep ball. If, if look, look at the stat line, just it, it's just an example. It doesn't mean it, it proves my point. It's just an example, though, of Pauline uh, Camus for Dom Lefal. Two catches for 48 yards. Those yeah. aren't – look, maybe she made uh, people miss with the flag, but uh, you were there. Was, was it not a, yeah. deep, a, a deep ball to Pauline? Yeah, she, she, had a, she had a good game. I think Dom Lefort did a really good job uh, really with his bounce attack for what he had presented to the team. I just think that overall, uh, Dom's legs enabled this team to really win that football game because he bought time in the pocket. He right. rolled to his right. He rolled to his left. But, you know, when it came down to it, uh, even though Samuel threw four INTs for, for easy fun, they cashed in on those mistakes. It was half a field to work with, right? Not, not a full field to work with. So it made it easier right. for Dom and Form to really control the narrative and incorporate uh, uh, a Camus or, or a Farrell into the lineup of where he wanted to be with that pass catching duo. So I just think that they had a really good game plan in place. Um, and look, on the flip side, I think Pauline Camus had 12 tackles. Right. So it yeah. wasn't like yeah, Samuel yeah, yeah. Emilio Pachet was thrown away from her. He targeted her, but they couldn't really have much success against her. And that, you know, it, and like tackles is one of those misnomer stats that, oh, you had 12 tackles. Well, well, what happened in that situation? Why did you have 12 tackles for? And yeah. in this case, they targeted her, and, and she she was able to uh, put a force field and keep it at bay for minimal gains. Yeah, yeah. So when we look at um, when we look at the situation now for Justice League, uh, are they peaking at the right time here, Iggs? Uh, they lost a close one that they had on Monday. Or do you do you still see some faults in this team that says eh, not yet they're competitive, but no, not not buying into their into their stock yet. Yeah, the the latter. Uh, that's a couple of games now uh, where the narrative uh, and the voice of Alex Laroche, uh, who plays on Justice League, is nah, I don't really want to talk about the game. Like we're not playing at our best. Uh, and uh, looks like both both of those games were against uh, Kiss My Outlaws. Um, so, look the the title towards Coed won a Coed won championship would have to go through uh, Kiss My Outlaws as the number one seed, and it looks like they're not ready uh, to take that next step and 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 uh, and beat a team like uh, KMO. Especially, I don't know. Do you want to talk about it? You want to bring it up? Yeah. You want to bring up so, Sarah Parker's uh, playoff uh, record here? Yeah. And maybe so, finals so record. Here's the thing, right? Uh, funny enough, I uh, saw Stephen Harper saw as, as he's coming off the football field. Why don't you have Isaiah Lark rush Sarah Parker? Because Sarah Parker's <laughs> had difficulty with, with taller or, or telescopic arm rushers out there. Yeah. And he mentioned, well, Isaiah was a little bit uh, banged up from, from, a, from a touch tournament in Ottawa and, and may rush, may not rush. So the scoreline is 52-39. The scoreline previous to that was 46-39 for, uh, for, for KMO. Yeah. Allard rushed Parker, deflected the ball 
picked it off, scored the touchdown. Yeah. And it, it brought back memories of when I was calling the, uh, the co-ed one in last spring of 2021. Yeah. Saying that, well, that is the book. That is her. There's a hex on her when there's a rusher of six foot plus with long limbs that take away pass lanes from her. I, and, yeah. and with all due respect to Sarah Parker, I love her as a person. I love her as a football player. She isn't the type to, to leave the X spot where she stands. She's not going to roll out. And that kind of limits her passing avenues of options. And that's what happened in that game on Monday. And it makes you wonder now for the blueprint of success for opposing teams, if you have a guy who's six plus six foot three, six foot four, like Isaiah Lard or even Mo Khan, do you just send that person and say, just get your hands wide and force her to make her throws? You, uh, you, you immediately made me jump here. Uh, was this a hint that maybe Mo Khan's making a comeback into, uh, into well, Tom Brady? You never know, man. You know, the has been asking about Did Mo you just Khan. Compare still... yourself to Tom Brady. I never said anything about comparing myself to Tom Brady, but I'm saying that, you know, I had some throws yesterday to you and, and, and Alex Blay. I did a little punting with Alex Blay, dropping a dead dropping 35 yard punts. Yeah, you, no, uh, you, you shammed one uh, off. I, I shanked one at the end, yeah. but I had about yeah. two, three punts of 35 plus. So Marco Batoldi wants his ball back, by the way. I know, I have it. Uh, we were having fun with that ball yesterday. Yes, I know. You, you were punting it. Punting is a great skill to have in FPF, by the way. That it is. It's a great skill that's never had to be used at all. So my leg's fresh for punting in FPF. It makes, makes sense that you're good at it. But yeah, back to the point, though, right? With, yes, with yes about tall that, rushers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I just think that it's going to hurt her if she can't get off her spot of success. Yes. Although, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it a couple of times when she wants to make uh, a, the thing is it's an, it's she, you, she takes advantage of aggressive rushers coming straight on a beeline towards her. She'll make them. She, she's a good pocket uh, moving quarterback. It, it, oh, not, the not, pocket moving yeah, so like it really looks like a Peyton Manning or a Tom Brady just just casually taking one step to the side, one step up and back to the right. So like her mechanics are insanely good and you see that on her Instagram videos uh uh practicing and shuffling around in the quarterback. But again, it's all within the pocket. So the if it's like, again to the point and and I you know what I got rushed against a taller rusher and I like to stay in the pocket. I, I, I can move out of the pocket, but I prefer, you know, beating a team with my arm, getting the, the, the ball spread out to all my receivers. Yeah. So uh, when there was a taller rusher, I, I, can, I saw the difficulty. Uh, you know, a couple b- passes batted down. Uh, it makes it second and long, third and long. Um, so I can kind of sympathize with, with Parker, especially if you have a, uh, forget, forget Isaiah Lord, like that's, that's, that's ridiculous amounts of heights, um, coming at you. So yeah, it's, it's a kryptonite. I mean, it's, she's going to have to maybe call different plays more, you know, three, three yard outs, you know, something that's not necessarily down, down, down the middle. Yeah. It, it, it's something that they have to figure out going into the playoffs. Uh, for tier two, uh, Blue Wave uh, took a bad hit on uh, Monday. Eggs, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, Carrion OJ uh, got hurt late in the first half with two plays to go, and didn't return. And now, this, if she doesn't come back for the playoffs here, uh, will this Blue Wave be nothing more than a quiet pond in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean that was their best shot uh, at winning uh, football games. Uh, you, of course, score kept the first half of that game. Um, probably was moving the offense uh, at a better clip than what the second half quarterback did. Is was that not the case? Yeah, um, unfortunately, it, 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 you know, speaking to Kellyad before the game, she said, "Look, you know," and I appreciate that she watches the show or she got feedback that I'm a big fan of her, which I have always been a big fan of her. But she kind of said, "Look, you know, we don't have a full arsenal of players to work with today." Which is true. They were missing some players on the yeah, roster. They, yeah, yeah. But but now, if you're missing Kellyanne OJ from that lineup, just for her p- sheer presence, it's going to hurt this team trying to make um, inroads in the playoffs. And and now, with the way it is, I mean, depending on who they get in the first round, uh, this might be uh, a Mike Tyson 
first round knockout punch and they're done in the first round of playoffs. Right. So, I mean, we're, we're going to have a, a whole episode next week dedicated to the playoff matchups, but the, well, cl- after the fact, practically, like, I don't know if uh, oh. you guys have time Friday or Saturday or when's the first round of playoffs for, uh, for uh, Cohen? Everything. Oh no. Sunday. Everything starts Sunday. I mean though, but like uh, just in general, we're talking about COVID specifically. Yeah. yeah so go ahead. Specifically I... stand by uh, Sunday. <laughs> Okay, so it is Sunday. So, I mean, we can talk about it because we already know the, the matchup. So, uh, Kiss My End Zone has a, uh, has a buy. Uh, and I'm not fully on the standings page. Uh, so, Kiss My End Zone has a buy. Uh, Les Princesses are the number two seed uh, playing against uh, Gorillas, is it? I need, I'm getting there. The standings are loading. Uh, Les well, Princesses are playing Iced Out. Sorry. Excuse yeah, me. Iced Out. Uh, are playing Iced Out. Uh, three Hunas are playing Gorillas. Uh, and Sneaky Snakes are the matchup for uh, for Blue Wave. So, yeah, look. Uh, you know what? With with Cariano G in the lineup, that could have been a uh, a trap game for, for Sneaky Snakes. Maybe thinking it's a bit of an easier uh, game. Uh, now, unfortunately, without OG uh, taking snaps under center, uh, I I have I don't see many outcomes where Blue Wave comes out victorious against. Yeah, the I I think the top end, like the Princess, the Hunters are going to roll. Uh, the yeah. Princess is a really good team. We know that you know that Iggy and I know that um, they could have put out like a fifty burger on, on, on Blue Wave um, yeah. had that been the case, but didn't do so. Yeah. But, you know, I just think that there isn't a team in the bottom half of that playoff draw that can come in there and beat an LP, a 300s, or even Sneaky Snakes. So yeah. I think that we're going to have um, the top four seeds play each other in the second round or the semifinals of the Tier 2 playoffs. Yeah, that's pretty much an, uh, how it's, how it's going to play out. Blue Wave did have a chance if Kariano G... Uh, was was the quarterback uh, against Sneaky Snakes, though. Unfortunately, that wave is no longer a wave. It's more like a, a quiet lake uh, on a mm-hmm. Sunday morning. So so we'll see how this plays out. But like, Alexis Dubois will have a full recap of the playoff or preview of the playoffs uh, before this Sunday. And we'll have a recap of that and preview the Final Four with Alexis Dubois next week uh, for Tier 1 and Tier 2. Uh have we covered all the divisions now, uh, Iggs? Uh, in this midst of me being congested, are we covered all the grounds here? Or what's going on? We have uh, fully congested all of FPF. <clears throat> Perfect. It is now time for... Games of the Week! Eagle Although, congested. admittedly, this one's going to be like pretty fast because there's only four divisions that have games left yeah. in... Well, what about playoff games? Uh, I mean, we'll pick them when we know them, but rather right now they're not officially on the site, so we have to wait for the games to be done okay. so we can do the final rankings, so we can then do the matchups, so then we can then do the picks. Um, maybe something we talk about after this call and what we're doing for that coverage, because who knows at this point. Cool. All right, let's, let's go. Let's start with Division E, Mountain Goats and Magnetos. 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 Wind Diesel Black Label. Wind Diesel. I'll go Black Label. The Praetorian Guard, Sizzle. Guards. I'll go the Guard as well. Sule Fess, Scranton, Stranglers. Stranglers. I can't pick it. Pillow Talkers, Penetrators. Uh, Penetrators. I'll go Pens. Vic in a Box, Big Fat Bats. Oof, this is tough. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go uh, Big Fat Bats. Yeah, I'm going uh, gonna to go Upset Special, Big Fat Bats. And our last game of Division E, Magnetos TB Elite. Magnetos. Uh, Magnetos. Magnetos. Okay, we're going to go Division C, Le Montagnard, Tough Lungs. Tough Lungs. Yeah, going Tough Lungs. Two Inches Gang, Tough Lungs. Tough Lungs. Tough Lungs, double win. Top Sizen, Blitz Buds. This is good. Blitz Buds. I'll go. Oh, man. Blitz buds. Give me blitz. Very close. The commission, Los Penetradores. Commission. I'll go commission. <clears throat> the Stoics, one step closer. Stoics. I'll go Stoics as well. And the commission, Hot Sauce Sports. Hot Sauce. So- uh, I'm going to go commission, but commission can come up short for the playoff run, though. Ooh, I'll go HSS. All right. Uh, Division 
B. Yeah. B Raves. Junkyard Dogs. Go B Raves. Raves. Touch it, catch it. Thor's hammer. Uh, Thor's hammer. Thor's, yeah. Moretti Crime Family. Silent Ticklers. Ticklers. Yeah, I'll go with the Ticklers as well. And our last games is going to be Division D. D. My God, this is hard. Uh, Team Timbo versus the Mighty Six. Timbo. No, I'll go Mighty Six. Tim, uh, Team Timbo falls short of the playoffs. All right. Selwyn Old Boys, Santar. The show up, Santar. We'll win this game. Yeah, I'll go Santar. Fourth and Schlong, Trap Stars. Good game. Fourth and Schlong. Yeah, but fourth and Schlong, man, they're really good. Michael Caparelli might be quarterback of the year. And Threat Level Midnight, Kiss My Vulture. Kiss My Vultures. Can't pick it. And that's going to be our games of the week for Thursday. Um, stay tuned <coughs> for coverage regarding the wild card <laughs> round, divisional round, whatever you want to call it, on wild Sunday, card. July 31st. And then the follow-up round on Monday, August 1st. Um, definitely keep your eyes peeled on the website on Friday morning specifically to see where the matchups are going to be. Arguably, it might be Friday afternoon, but you get the point. Uh, the schedule is technically already up, so you know the time slots for your division and the locations of those yeah. fields as well. So you can plan ahead in terms of when you should expect to have a game, but uh, definitely keep track of that just to make sure it's there. If you do have, for whatever reason, any restrictions, if I want to call it that, I mean, let, for example, let's say you just, the six o'clock time slot is just impossible for you for whatever reason, reach out to us. We'll see what we can do. We'll try and be accommodating, um, but that's not a guarantee, but we'll, we'll try our best. If ever there's like an absolute thing, we're like, listen, my guys are at a chalet and they're going to be back at eight o'clock or whatever it is. Can we get a game at eight or after? We can probably help you but if Four everyone teams. asks for that then someone's not going to get it right so keep that in mind that there's only so many time slots and uh, if you do have a conflict we got to prioritize accordingly so yep let us know all right then <clears throat> so please check out your rosters again and please if you have any uh ir submissions do it now so we can process it and get that out to you guys as well and and show up to your games please and, and don't do that forfeit crap yep. make a sway uh, Magic words, please, e Eeks. Uh, from all of us here at the Weekly Extra Point Live. Uh, good night. Good night. Yep. The week all eight the season. Yeah, the eight-week season. We'll see you for the playoffs next week. Good night, Matthew Kachuk. Again, Calgary. Good night, Bobby Ryan. Bobby Ryan. Yeah, you got arrested. <laughs> oh, shit. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs>